the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Keep praying. Keep praying. Father, visit me by your word. In the name of Jesus. Keep praying everywhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just one prayer point and then we'll sit down. The grace to see. The grace to see. Lord, the grace to see. The grace to see. Lift your voice and pray. The grace to see. The grace to see. Habalaunda shabrates kebada katush. Ibra kato jala hasana makato prakatush. Herebodus kebran diga daba nala bash. Ebra gada gada para gada bakato shabran daga tala daba. Shada gada prakata. The grace to see. The grace to see. The grace to see. The grace to see. Take away the veil, O oh God, from my eyes. Grant me the grace to see. hallelujah praise the lord we are still going to pray that prayer there is truly a grace that can cause the eyes of a man to see isaiah 29 verse 11 and 12 there is no amount of education or natural enlightenment that can replace light spiritual light the bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit and it tells you the reason because they are spiritually discerned it says and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned say read this i pray thee and he saith, i cannot why for it is sealed next verse and the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. That means there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned cannot help themselves. No matter what earthly advantage you have, there are dimensions where it is only the Spirit of God. Chapter 32 and verse 8 of Job, Elihu was speaking, he says, But there is a spirit not in heaven in man there is a spirit in man and the inspiration the word there is breath breath it doesn't just mean motivation the breath there is no motivation that gives illumination it takes the breathing of the spirit can give men understanding isaiah 11 and verse 2 that all these spirits when they rest upon you go to verse 3 they are all for one purpose and he shall make him of quick understanding that means there is timing matters in your knowing the things of god of quick understanding of quick understanding of quick understanding lift your voice and say lord light my candle light my candle 
neither do men light a lamp that's the secret not neither do men have a lamp neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel light my candle oh god light my candle open my eyes to see hallelujah job chapter 29 We're going on shortly. Job was a very, very strange man. We're reading from verse 1 to 4. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, We're reading to 4. But that I were in the months past, in the days when God prayed me. Uh huh. When his candle shined upon my head now think just don't rush when his what candle shined upon my head that god will shine a candle upon a man's head and when by his light not my light by his light thy word O lord is a lamp to my feet a light to my path when by his light i walk through darkness for as i was in the days of my youth when the secret of the lord was upon my tabernacle this was the basis of his results the lord shined his candle upon my head then the lord used his light and say walk through your darkness use my light and then he kept his secrets on my tabernacle like you go to your library and you find a book called the secrets of god you can now begin to read all the exploits that happen light secrets light secrets light let me tell you the truth there are things that are not public god must come to you and show you ephesians chapter one let me show you something and then we'll sit down ephesians chapter one mighty god of heaven from verse 8 wherein he had abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he had proposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he may gather together in one all things in christ both which are in heaven and which are in the earth all in him he says in whom we have also obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who walked all things after the counsel of his own will yeah this is it please let's go to chapter three it just came to my spirit and i thought to share it with us verse 2 if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of god which is given me to you word meaning for your sake how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote aforetime in few words whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ now the verse that i've been looking for is in verse five read with me please one to read which in other ages 
that means that there are truths that in other ages were not known he says as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit it is not every mystery we share now that was known in time past the holy spirit has not stopped revealing just like he has not stopped creation the bible says in revelations there were times john saw some things he says seal it close this one it is not for this time one prayer the mystery for this season oh god let me see it the secret the lord that makes for exploits in this season not just in time past what the spirit is saying saying which in time past was not known but in these last days that he revealed to us by his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit the mystery for the season oh god hallelujah please be seated god bless you let's pay attention we'll rise up we pray just to exhort our hearts when jesus began to teach about the holy spirit among the many things please settle down among the many things he said the holy spirit will show you things to come not just things that are happening that means you will own the future by having access knowledge and light of the things that will be useful in the future the holy spirit he will show you not just that he would take things that are mine that is already spectacular but he says he will show you things to come he will show you things to come things to come let me tell you the things that god is the knowledge that he's bringing please listen these are not necessarily the things that will only benefit us now they are the keys and the patterns that will give us access to the future praise the lord father we bless you and we pray that the entrance of your word will give light and will give understanding to the simple in the name of jesus i pray like never before that what i'm about to share and exhort us on that finally someone will get this thing and that in the name of jesus christ as you get it you will rise like an edifice unhindered you know your time has come not just by the prophecy that comes you know your time has come the light comes to you when light does not come no matter who prophesies your time has not come you will all rise and shine not because of prophecy prophecy informs you so you can receive your faith you can release your faith to receive that which is meant for you but it's going to take light to us. hallelujah the law of honor this is one of the deepest spiritual mystery it is one of the most powerful spiritual laws i know second only to the law of encounter no matter what laws you know in the spirit if you do not know this you will never rise the law of honor pay attention we will listen and then we'll pray teach us your ways oh god make our lives easy by the wisdom that comes in knowing your ways in the name of jesus take away struggles take away hardship from our lives in the name of jesus christ very very powerful i will continue to teach us again and again that this kingdom is a kingdom of mysteries the bible says in matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven we don't reign just by goodwill 
don't reign just by good intention having a sincere desire is not enough to reign just being a kind and a nice person is not even enough to reign there are many kind and wonderful people who are victims of situations and circumstances it will take light everybody say light you see let me tell you this as god reveals these principles don't just write them on a jotter write them upon the tablet of your heart that if they ask you tomorrow what are the secrets of the kingdom you know you can bring them out i may not know this and this but by god's grace i know this one and i know this one they are irrefutable principles backed up by god's own integrity there is no man there is no policy there is no civilization that will change or corrupt the immutability of these truths it is true believe me when i tell you and god has granted me access by his grace to certain mysteries and principles of all of them i will continue to tell you second only to the law of encounter this is the greatest in terms of value the laws are all powerful and they have their place but they are not equally powerful hallelujah the law of honor the mystery behind very strange open doors the mystery behind the unstoppable lifting and the rising of people the mystery that can in one day end captivity this is the mother that gives birth to favor favor is at the mercy of this knowledge hallelujah two scriptures one first samuel chapter 2 please and verse 30 first samuel chapter 2 and 30 wherefore the lord god of israel said i said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever but now the lord said be it far from me for them that honor me i will honor and they that despise me i will lightly esteem that means trivialize this is god speaking them that honor me i will honor but they that despise me i will lightly esteem the kingdom works based on seed time and harvest that means that there is always a seed every result that we obtain in the kingdom can be likened to a harvest please understand what i'm teaching you i want you to get this law that it is and right when you call every result that you obtain in the kingdom a harvest whether it is healing whether it is deliverance whether it is prosperity whether it is fresh grace activation of the gifts of the spirit whatever dimension it can be called a harvest and that for every harvest there is a seed everybody say seed please say it again seed the bible tells us in genesis chapter 8 and verse 22 when a bread an offering that was well pleasing unto god the lord came and made certain vows backed up by his own integrity and he says as far as the earth remains he says see time and harvest then he lists all the others shall not cease that means for every harvest you desire you start your journey to actualizing that harvest by knowing what seed produces it are we together now not every seed produces everything there are seeds and harvests that are allocated for those seeds are we together now very very important for instance attention and listening is the seed for learning if you want to learn a harvest knowledge the seed that you sow 
is your attention my son pay attention not just listen pay attention so attention is a seed and that when you pay attention to anything the harvest that comes is that you will learn about it are we together knowledge in itself a seed for change or transformation you are not transformed by desire you are not changed just by intention it will take no for any change and any transformation to happen there are seeds very very important time is the seed for destiny there is no destiny without time please listen when god wants to give you a destiny he gives you a seed of time the way you sow that time will determine the kind of destiny that you will have that a man's destiny is a multiplication of the seeds of the time are you seeing why time is important that whatever tries to fight your time is not really really fighting your time is fighting your destiny because your time is the seed for your destiny appearance for instance is not only the seed for acceptance it is the seed for perception appearance does not just talk about the clothes you wear alone appearance is the seed for acceptance it is also the seed for perception that means i am at liberty to perceive things about your life based on your appearance if i see a mecca with a white um lab coat and apron and a stethoscope i can perceive that based on that appearance i can't call him a carpenter that is not the appearance of a carpenter are we together now that means that if i can change your perception by changing my appearance it's very very powerful i'm showing you seeds and the harvest that come words words are the seeds that carve intentions and thoughts words you use words to paint an intention from you to someone that means if i want to transfer what is in my heart to you the seed i will sow is words if i don't speak right i can create a harvest in you that was not what i intended i'm showing you how these things play are we together now battle is the seed for territory every time you want the harvest of a territory the seed you sow is battle there is no access to a territory without battle Are we together friendship is the seed for relationship that he who wants friends must first show himself you must sow that seed of friendship this is very 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 powerful prayer and fasting are the seeds for both personal and corporate revival it's, it's all through scripture that every time you really want to see revival no matter what else you add to the table if there is no prayer and fasting you just added fertilizers without a seed the seed for revival both personal and corporate is prayer and fasting honor is the seed for access please write it down honor don't assume you have heard what i've said don't assume i've taught it so many times just listen very carefully honor is the seed for access that means dishonor is also a seed and there is a harvest that dishonor brings dishonor is the key to barriers the harvest that dishonor brings is a barrier on your way this is powerful because of the breakthroughs we seek in life will come at the instance of the access that we have 
and i'm teaching you that in the realm of the spirit that every time there is a limitation standing before you then there is a dimension of this law that you must engage otherwise you will remain there if you're with me say amen all failures can be traced to dishonor all without exception all failures in your life and my life can be traced to dishonor a threefold dimension of dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to spiritual principles all failure can be directly traced to dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles are we together what then is honor please write this down generally honor talks of esteem esteeming a person or a thing but let me give you a definition that i've used and i found very valuable honor is the discerning please write the discerning true honor starts from discernment the celebration and the rewarding of excellence of usefulness of value honor is the discerning the celebration the rewarding of excellence from the word excel of usefulness and of value that means that you have please come you have the fortitude to honor first to the degree to which you can discern it's a spiritual perception that you must have the ability to discern value the ability to discern excellence the word excellence means the fortitude to surpass standards are we together now the ability to discern the use of a person or a thing either to your life or a system is called honor please listen very carefully that means dishonor on the other hand means trivializing importance dishonor means trivializing value trivializing usefulness trivializing a system a principle a person please write this i'm so glad that we're learning this even as we prepare for the business session tomorrow i believe it's going to be a very powerful time please pay attention listen dishonor means to take things or people for granted dishonor means to lightly esteem in second timothy chapter 2 and verse 20 the bible tells us there are certain vessels that are unto dishonor that are unto dishonor they are vessels but they are unto or for dishonor that means a vessel unto honor or a vessel unto dishonor is someone learning something here it is the key to all kinds of access the moment a door closes the key that opens it will be honor to god or honor to men or honor to principles or a combination of all of them are you getting what i'm saying now this is very very powerful and i'm teaching this because many people in our generation do not know that the reason why a person can mark time at a realm spiritually in ministry in business in family and so on and so forth because of one word dishonor dishonor is such a serious thing to god and honor is such a serious thing that the entire old testament was a system of creating honor listen very carefully believers i preached a message years ago called commanding results and that was the first time i began to talk about honor and i have watched this lord change people's lives i've watched it change my own life 
and i want you to hold on to this law tonight like a ladder and let me see the devil that will stop you from rising honor very very powerful the bible lets us know that honor is required for success honor is required for any and every level of lifting whether spiritual listen please whether it is intellectual and all of that when a student sits down in class to listen to a teacher that attention is honor the student sits down he starts by discerning that this man standing before me even if a student is at a higher level are we together now that this man standing before me has paid the price to accumulate the knowledge needed to lift me beyond my position and so the student further demonstrates his honor by placing value on what the lecturer is saying now being out many information may escape his mind he will write them down and follow it through that is honor are we together now this is very very powerful because many believers do not know honor they do not understand honor violate spiritual systems here and there and we continue to become victims although well-meaning nebuchadnezzar dishonored god and god taught him a lesson that his sovereign power cannot be shared with any man he turned him to a beast and for seven years his life was miserable are we together now it's very very important there are all kinds of things happening in the body of christ and i can tell you the reason why many ministries many businesses many destinies many individuals some of our well-meaning parents never had the opportunity to rise one word dishonor this law also states that anything you dishonor will diminish in your life anything god man knowledge money anything you dishonor will begin to fade and erode out of your life and anything you consistently honor will begin to magnify in your life it's true we have dishonored men and women of god around the world members have dishonored their pastors and their leaders Husbands have dishonored their wives. Wives dishonored their husbands. Please listen. Students have dishonored lecturers. Lecturers dishonored students. We have dishonored men. We have dishonored God. We have dishonored laws. The laws that make for success. Isn't it amazing the way people believe that they will make impact and have no regard for laws? They just hope and think that their lives will magically evolve into the will of God. Either because they have good intentions or they think that they are not evil. No. Everything is built by laws. If it must last, it is built by laws. A spiritual life is built by laws. Prosperity is built by laws. Impact and influence is built by laws. Evil is built by laws. Grace of God the lavish disposition of the grace of God upon a man's life is built by laws. Sustainability of anything is done by laws. And if you do not know the laws that are allocated for having access to the hearts of men, the hearts of kings, especially in this season, then you may not rise to certain levels. Hallelujah dishonor is not only bad dishonor is sin you have to understand this we're not just talking about a concept that is positive or negative dishonor is sin that has real consequences
we live in a world where the success and the sacrifices of many can be trivialized within a heartbeat we don't have regard for the sacrifice spiritually and otherwise of people i will tell you why people never rise because we have not trained ourselves to discern difference to know that there is a difference between a failure and a success they are not the same it's not an insult it's not being sarcastic there is a difference between being anointed and not being anointed there is a difference between being graced and not being graced it's a difference between being knowledgeable and ignorant there is a difference between being old and young there is a difference between being responsible and irresponsible there is a difference between being spiritual and unspiritual do you know this if you cannot discern it then you will not know who and what is deserving of honor are we together now this mic is doing something first to my life and then to all of us are we together now my honor to this mic will be to keep the systems that will keep it amplified are we together now if i off this mic i cannot pretend to not feel the effect it will do something to me i may shout but my voice will pay for it so honor is the ability to know the difference between using a mic and not using a mic you must know the effect on your life there is a difference between living in the favor of god and living outside the favor of god you cannot say it no there is a difference between obtaining help from god and running your life by your strength and by yourself those who have known have pieced together the principles and regardless of what men say let me tell you my brothers and my sisters learn this that i teach you tonight and watch the self-imposed prophecies of people fall to the ground even without saying any prayer on it the immutability of god's counsel backed up by his own name there is no failure for a man who understands this law if you ever see failure in a vision it remains there in the vision the laws of god will manipulate his life till he succeeds honor oh, one powerful law this is why many men of god never rise this is why many ministries never rise it's not that they don't have revelation they have many other things but there's no honor there are many things that will never rise they have not trained themselves to know the difference between a good working family and a family that is not working there are many people who will never be rich and wealthy because they have not discerned that there is a difference between a wealthy man and someone who is not wealthy many times we call the sacrifices of people luck or chance listen carefully when you see a young man anointed vibrant with fire and grace you just say this guy was lucky maybe he just met a man of god and hands were laid on him that perception that inability to see that people do not just rise by default you don't see a house built and you say wow the winds just put blocks together and added what what creativity from the wind no there are things that are too intentional to be a mistake are you getting what i'm saying now there are certain results that have gone past the realm of guesswork there is a level of excellence there is a level of intention there are certain levels of anointing that a man can possess that is no longer guesswork you have to know what you are doing to get there it's impossible to get there hoping no it's like olympic or boxing you fight somebody on the street and have an advantage but you can't go to the ring and fight someone and convince yourself that all things are possible there is an art to winning in the ring there may not be arts to winning on the street but if you enter a boxing ring the person will tell you there are courses you take you understand anatomy the entire anatomy and physiology to know the parts you can punch and the effects that they create so he looks at you and you are already dead because he has seen all the loopholes 
and yet you just think he's looking with the eyes of a layman until he gives you punch then you will know that there is a difference between a boxer and a man It's amazing how many people look at successful people and sometimes they are even afraid for them. Ah, I hope you will not fail. Are you joking? Do you think success is that cheap? Success is built on absolutely intentional laws. No great ministry is built just by intention. Please listen, listen. There is no great family as any good father, mother, and well-behaved children. There is a level of family result that it cannot be luck. Cannot be luck. When you come from a family that is tied into witchcraft and all of that, there is a level of result that if you attain, there are things that you have dealt with. It's impossible to cross a certain threshold being under captivity. Everybody say honor. My assignment is to train your eyes, to train your spirit, to know that everything is not the same. God is not the same as a shrine. So when you say choose between God and one shrine in your village, you don't have honor. It's this on that perception. When they kept God, the ark, and they kept Dagon. God's jealousy made the difference clear immediately. It's not the issue of God. There's no point to prove you are still God. There's a point to prove. He made sure Dagon fell head on. There are times in life that there are points to prove. There are really points to prove. Is God helping us? Right now, there are people here who have traveled from so far. You have come because of one word, honor. You call it hunger, but it is still honor. Are we together now? Reverend Daniels and his dear wife, let's, let's bless God for them. I mean, I was, I was in Eboi. They are based in Enugu, great ministry work there. I usually go to minister there. It was them together with some pastors that put the meeting in Eboi. It was such a great, phenomenal meeting. And as soon as they were done, I returned back and I was surprised to see these people still here. It's called honor. The discernment that there can be more. You don't just act like that. You think first, do I need this level? Is it really important? With this level or without it, is there an effect in my life? There are things you must think about. If I'm poor or rich, will it create an effect? If your mind says you don't have honor because you to think that being wealthy and being poor, any one of them can go, is a sign that you are oppressed. Because the Bible, listen, I'm not just talking about money, I'm opening your eyes to something. So if a young man remains at a level spiritually and you don't contend for higher levels of grace and the anointing, it is because you have not honored the relevance of that dimension of grace. You have not perceived that to be greatly anointed is higher than being anointed. How God anointed Jesus, not just that he was anointed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. So contend for the anointing with an open heart is because you have discerned that the anointing is like money. It is the amount you have that will determine what you can buy. The grace of God upon your life will only solve the problems that are below it. Any challenge that is higher than that grace, you will not be able to purchase those spiritual realities. So the tension for spiritual growth is proof that you are honoring the anointing of the spirit at that level many of you are participating in this this prayer and fast now regardless of the inconvenience many people have been under all kinds of inconvenience yet you endure the name of what you are doing is honor because you know that after seven days you are going to carry something something that no devil will be able to stop and you weighed your convenience you weighed several things and you said the sacrifice was worth it honor 
it is honor that will make someone in need of a politician's help sit at his reception from 6 a.m in the morning and the man says i'm sorry i can't see you now can you be patient i'm i'm traveling but i'll come back by nine he says no problem and he sits down there for more than 13 hours and the man returns ah your excellency sir you are back because he knows that no matter how long i wait it's cheaper than suffering no matter how long i wait in that place one favor from that man can change my life a that foolish man will say what is this what is there and you will go back to recycle your pain once again we we'll apologize for the inconvenience there's, there's wind blowing especially for those outside everybody say honor it is honor that teaches you that an elderly person is not the same as a young person that no matter how knowledgeable you are there is an advantage that time and age can provide to men are we together now The Shunammite woman saw Elisha passing every time. Elisha was not the only one who was passing every time. But the Bible says she perceived that guy. Mm -mm. There is this. The fact that he was always passing meant that he was always under. He was hearing God all the time and going to execute instructions. And she perceived that this man's coming into my house can provide an advantage. And she said, I will not just tell him, come to my house. I will prepare for his coming. So she, she kept watching him. Every time she would see him carrying a book. She didn't ask him, what do you like, books? Do you? She kept perceiving. And she went and prepared. She simulated an environment that would suit him and say, sir, you are welcome. And the man said, all right, madam, you have brought me. Let me tell you what you brought. What is your problem? She said, I don't have any, I live among my people. Is to tell you the level to which she has shelved that case of having a child. And Elisha said, no, you don't bring this kind of grace and your life remains the same. It's an insult to the sacrifice that brought this anointing. I paid the price and I went to Gilgal. I went down to John. I got a double portion. I can't enter your house. You honored me and then I walk out. And then your gate man too enters and walks out. And then anybody, and what then is the difference of the sacrifice? I'm not one of the sons of the prophet. I follow two to the end. Madam, the, the, the grace is crying for him. Give it an assignment. He said, no, 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 no. I'm an influential woman. I love my people. And then he said, I will create one by myself. And the servant said, she doesn't have a child. He said, that's it notice she didn't ask for a child she didn't pray for a child she only honored and the honor found what problem it will solve by itself there is a realm of honor that you get to that you will have to open your mouth and pray some things everybody kept lamenting about the hunger in samaria Samaria were in trouble. I said, You too, you felt the hunger a bit. They said, Yes. And out of all the people who were crying, the women and all the people, they noticed that two people were unaffected by that famine. The king and a strange man. He was not crying for bread as if he was not a citizen there. And then when they, a whole nation is suffering. And the solution is in the pocket of one man. Yet he didn't pray. He just kept moving his thing around the city. This honor kept closing the door until someone provoked that grace, provoked that anointing. And he said, all right, by this time tomorrow. He didn't say, let me go and pray. And then I'll see the cloud. He said, by time. He didn't say, oh Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I stand as your servant and I call on heaven. He said, me, I make it happen. By this time tomorrow, let the gates of a nation be open. Your Bible. Honor is powerful. When you honor God, there are things God will do to you that all men will know is only God that can do this. God will do some things and sign his signature like Julius Berger will build and write B so that you will know the difference. So you don't confuse it and think someone else built it. God will build your life and write his name on it. 
so that when anyone looks at you and say last year were you not like this you say yes it's not i didn't build myself i was built by an architect you honor men you have access to their heart and with their heart will come their influence their credibility their resources you put pressure on everything they are and you will leverage on their credibility to rise let me tell you your your journey will be hard in life if you do not know how to honor men all men are not the same are we together someone i know won an election and as soon as the person won an election so that works with him just called me and said, he started jumping why was the person jumping he didn't participate he didn't do anything yet already they've not sworn in that one but he started jumping ah god has buttered our bread because when you honor a man and have access to his heart you don't have to rise he just has to rise and you will follow him honor it will open doors for you that will surprise you it will accelerate your life beyond your imagination please sit down sit down let me show you for when i was studying this it struck my heart and the lord put it in my heart to show you i'm going to show you four cases in the bible where honor or dishonor played a role and let's see what happened number one just for there are so many and then i'll give you the and we'll pray someone's life is changing i know this i know this listen this is one of the laws that you will see the result immediately there are some laws that you may see the result later this one you can start seeing it from this night Genesis chapter 9 from verse 20 this was the issue of Noah thank you thank you so much Noah and his sons it says and Noah began to be a husbandman and he planted a vineyard we're reading to 27 and he drank of the wine and was drunken and covered within his tent now there are all kinds of theological debates about this as to what this really meant it's, it's not it's not the 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 the, the the revelation of the context is not what I'm, I'm really interested. I want to show you something. And next verse. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told it to his two without. 23. And Shem and Jack took a garment. Listen carefully. And laid it on both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward. And they saw not their father's nakedness. 24 and noah awoke from wine and knew he was sleeping he was not told though he woke up and knew that his younger son he knew what had done to him 25 and he said cursed be canaan a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren 26 and he said remember he didn't know who did what and he didn't say all of you come who saw the nakedness and who covered it that means noah was not annoying a man that built an ark that all the animals entered is that an ordinary man notice how the bible does not even talk about vineyard and the wine again it just focuses on the cause and the blessing he wakes up from his sleep and just knows that many things happened while he was sleeping the same way you can look at your father and say my useless father if only this man went to school and while you are saying it he's sleeping but there are laws listen to me listen to what i'm telling you these are laws and ordinary none of the sons he didn't call an assembly and say okay tell me what happened and he said daddy this is what happened no he got up and then he said blessed be the lord god of shem and Enan shall be his servant 27. god shall enlarge japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of shem and Enan shall be his servant end of discussion 
what was the offense dishonor someone dishonored noah another person honored noah two of them instantly got rewards for it i told you honor is a seed it's a seed that grows fast like a weed number two now this one you have a lot to learn here genesis chapter 16 ah the lord opened my eyes to see something there genesis chapter 16 this is the story of sarah and hagar please look up and learn something powerful here and now sarah abraham's wife beg him no child notice that all these stories start with something that looks like a problem and then in the midst of it the problem is forgotten and then the context of honor or dishonor is the discussion and he said and she had a handmaid an egyptian whose name was hagar verse 2 and sarah said unto Abraham, behold now the lord had restrained me from bearing i pray thee go into my handmaid that it may be that i may obtain children by her now you have to study in jewish practice to know this was not anything unusual at those times your brother's wife could bear children for you and maids and all of that so and abraham hearkened to the voice of sarah verse 3 notice and sarah abraham's wife took hagar her maid the egyptian after abraham had dwelt 10 years and so on and so forth and gave her to her husband abraham to be his wife verse 4 and he went into hagar and she conceived and when she saw that she had conceived her mistress was despised in her eyes notice the story this was a girl that was brought and then he said Todd, since i'm not able to give you a child let me not be too selfish that is because of me based on that tradition now here is my housemaid have a child with her and at the moment the lady noticed she was pregnant something happened next verse and sarah said unto abraham my wrong be upon me i have given my maid into thy bosom and when she saw that she had conceived i was despised in her eyes watch this the lord judge between me and thee next verse but abraham said to sarah behold thy maid is in thy hand do with her as it pleased thee and sarah dealt hardly with her she fled from her face now get ready to learn the lesson and the angel of the lord so sarah drove hagar now are you getting the story now and the angel of the lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness by the fountain in the way of shore eight and he said listen hagar sarah's maid when comest thou what did the angel call her sarah's maid we know the protocol even from the spirit just because you have a child i will call you by that ordinance you are still sarah's maid your lifting was connected to sarah and even though you have left the realm of the spirit still recognizes that this lifting was tied sarah he says whence camest thou and whither will thou go and she said i flee from the face of my mistress sarah look at this and the angel of the lord said unto her what did he say return to thy mistress and submit yourself under her hands in other words madam there's no hope for your situation honor has closed the door not even me my recommendation is go back let that submission be in place otherwise i'm meeting you here i would see go like that this is bible return to your mistress and submit yourself to her last verse <laughs> and the angel of the lord said unto her i will multiply thy seed exceedingly that it shall not be numbered for multitude go back every other thing is still tied to that go back and submit yourself look at this kind of story a woman is running away and an angel meets her and she's complaining that this wicked and the bible testifies that sarah truly dealt with her hardly he would have said go and tell sarah you saw me i the angel of the lord has said she should mind herself and he says go back to your mistress i'm showing you very deep spiritual you will now know why elisha received the mantle
number three numbers chapter 12 follow me believers and let's grow in the spirit numbers chapter 12 this involved relatives now relatives relatives because this honor happens a lot with family and so relatives and miriam and aaron spoke against moses because of the utopian the word utopian means black woman whom he had married for he had married an utopian woman verse 2 and they said had the lord now they now digress and started saying does god speak to moses alone had the lord indeed spoken only by moses and had he not also spoken by us i hope you know miriam is a prophetess that means she was hearing god and aaron was a priest too so they are saying why i mean moses what are you saying i am a prophetess and this guy is a priest us too here and there we are hearing god and the lord had it and the lord had it what conversation two of them were talking you know and while they were talking god said let me see what i'm saying and the lord had it next verse now the man moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth verse 4 and the lord spake suddenly to moses hey god comes to hear something and goes back and say moses come something is about to happen to two of your relatives now let me inform you so that you don't beg me i'm the one who is going to do it now god knew what moses can do and he knows if moses talks he will interrupt the process he's collecting permission from moses to deal with certain people here and moses and unto aaron and miriam come out ye three to the tabernacle of the congregation and three of them came out of them hear god remember so now verify that they all hear god because god called three of them and all of them had next verse and the lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tent and called aaron and miriam and they both came forward and and he said hear now my words if there be a prophet among you i the lord will make myself known to him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream seven hi my servant moses is not so who is faithful in all my house one day i will explain to you what god just said next verse with him i will speak mouth to mouth that look look you people receive visions and dreams but i've left that realm with moses i don't just i come to him my level of relationship with moses is that i come to him and speak from my mouth to his mouth and not in dark speeches and in similitudes of the lord shall he behold wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against not me my servant moses next verse and the anger of the lord was kindled against them and he left next verse and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold miriam became leprous white as snow and aaron looked upon miriam and behold she was leprous 11. next verse and aaron said unto moses alas my lord the adjustment happened immediately i don't know what i called you before but after seeing this class alas my lord i beseech thee was this not what haman did to esther when it was imminent that he was going to die i beseech thee lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned i told you dishonor is a sin next verse let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed and when he cometh out of his mother's womb 13 and moses you see why god came to moses before and moses now said god oh yeah come come i've, I've looked at this and moses cried unto the lord saying heal her now oh god i beseech thee look at a man talking with god oh not oh god heal her now god is okay don't 14 and the lord said to moses if her father had but spit in her face 
should she not be ashamed seven days he says let her be shut out from the camp seven days and after that let her be sieved in again last verse Miriam was shot out of the camp seven days and the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in again you can continue she later recovered but I'm saying just because a man that God loved the jealousy of God came down dishonor the same way you can honor a man in secret he's not even aware and God will also hear it and see it and God will arise and deposit something upon your life are you getting blessed very powerful the last scripture and then i'll show you certain keys second kings chapter 2 second kings chapter 2 from verse 3 elisha was in in the heat of the anointing the portion anointing that just rested on him now this one now had to do with children sometimes ba is really really strange this is children and he went forth from thence on to Bethel and as he was going by the way there came forth what little children should they not be spared little children there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him saying Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. 24. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two shares out of the wood and tear 40 and two of them. He cursed them in whose name? Is it not the same God that said the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, but rich in love? small children what an adult ah, no problem these are little children they are learning and yet he turns to them and curses them in the name of the lord and bears come out and injure and children think how many things honor can do in your life and how many things dishonor can do in your life dishonor to the law of giving alone has kept a lot of people poor dishonor to productivity has kept a lot of people seeing visions of wealth that will never actualize let me tell you this please listen and this is a message to the body of christ there is a growing trend of many young vibrant ministers especially apostles and prophets all around the nation of africa and the world who because of civilization and the context of our understanding today are consistently violating this calling the name of every man of god tearing men of god down in the name of i know this i know that destroying all kinds of people let me tell you the laws of god are irrefutable it's only a matter of time you will see grave consequences the people i pity are the children of these people not even them they are endangering their children not knowing and some of you here have been victims of it you stand whether on social media whether whatever tear down anybody insult anybody you see a rich man getting private jet you write nonsense online stupid criminals we are coming for you you see a man anointed and the next thing you are saying something really nasty how are we sure it's the power of God? And while that is happening, God is hearing. He's bringing down, because the covenant of that man with God has a voice. It's an altar that is maintained by sacrifice. Please listen very carefully. I'm teaching you powerful spiritual principles. Many shop owners have insulted everybody succeeding. As though it's the reason why they are not succeeding. And their shop started down and notice that the more they pray the more it goes down because that trouble didn't come from satan so there is nothing to cast there i've seen men of god who went down and their voices almost never heard again because of the level the pungency of their criticizing all kinds of people 
today everybody right now is an analyst of the body of christ analyzing what is happening analyzing who is anointed analyzing this and that is dangerous listen to me listen to me these are spiritual principles nobody rose up just like that it's the same way they criticize william branham just because things went bad at the end of Islam and all of that people would tear down people had written all kinds of books and his grace is not speaking around the body of christ because of that pungency listen very carefully those who may not have crowd will tear down anybody and say it's an issue of crowd what is their membership sometimes those things come from a standpoint of sarcasm and God, who is the one who brings men is hearing and then we secretly go back and we say god must we remain like this and god said me i'm the force behind this lack of growth how many unemployed people will see someone and say what are you doing now he said i'm working in one school he said are ah, you it's better to have been making a kunua zobo to sell you mean you are right there you see that you think it's a joke but god is hearing that you have never submitted your cv and gotten a job and someone without submitting his cv he got a job i agree that he's getting four thousand but because we have learned dishonor are you getting what i'm saying now yes our lives we continue to web our lives with all kinds of strings of dishonor there are people who have refused to rise because of this one reason dishonor honor is the key to access and they never access grace they never access wisdom there are many wealthy people in this city for instance and there are not many people who have gone to sit down and say i came to visit you sir is there one or two things you can teach me say no everybody's a thief everybody's an arm robber and they continue to re-impart upon themselves that level forever please listen to what i'm teaching you those who have understood this have risen in ways that you cannot imagine happy are you when god carries the heart of a man and gives to you that god connects you huh, to the heart of a man through honor is somebody learning something so when you master honor when you learn honor you will see doors opening by themselves there are men of god who were invited to certain places once and will never go back there again because they did not understand the principle of honor to these systems when they took advantage of anything and just tore everybody down there are some of you who come to the houses of great people and you destroy your opportunity for connection forever you come to a house and you cross your leg you put it on a chair and you just balance and the next thing uh what, what will you like uh, i don't take too much pepper what exactly do you have let me know what you have and the person who is for is just an example the person who is talking is poor and doesn't have any open door are you seeing that now let me tell you this if doors refuse to open I am telling you this it is dishonor that has kept it close i never see any man or woman that is worthy of honor and will not communicate the honor that is due because i know the consequence there are many people in this city who would have been long healed by now there are many people who would have been long delivered by now but dishonor is the gate and the padlock the devil used to keep them in their situations forever you can pray you can fast but there are certain realms you cannot enter except through honor honor is the seed for access the lord by honor and by it has taken me to places today that i know there's no reason and there is no other way i would have gotten there what honor can do is powerful my brothers and my sisters listen to me you will step into prepared blessings when you understand honor honor to god honor to men 
honor to principles i'm not teaching you human worship now let me tell you this and, and let me balance it very quickly it is foolish and stupid of any great man especially a man of god when people show you honor and you take them for granted any wise person who knows god and has value for life will not take you for granted when you honor them what i'm saying now yes there are things people do to me that i'm if i have my way i will beg them and say please don't don't even please i'm okay i know you honor me from your heart the lord bless you let's leave it like that but that you dishonor men and you want to rise every realm you dishonor you've exempted yourself from entering that realm whether it's financially whether it's spiritually or otherwise see listen this is why you find out that you continue to dishonor people and secretly try to enter that realm and there is a resistance that no prayer will take away apostle you don't know what my father did to me my, my father is not a nice man you don't know what my mother did these people left me i would have died i would have gone into prostitution i paid school fees by myself now they think that i should come and bless them listen let me tell you they may not have gotten it well but it is no license for dishonor they may do everything wrong but one day they will do something right Pay for that one day because the blessing you will get the day they get it right will follow you transgenerationally hallelujah i pay attention there are ministries that honor me so much and honor me truly and i have seen the effect when i teach and share god's word in those places i see the result i know that the honor is sincere and you will see that those people receive those people rise those people grow that's why in many churches it is as that come and receive most members hardly if you know why because they know the pastor they know the elder maybe he's even their biological father so when he's preaching and he says everybody stretch forth your hands you just laugh and say daddy you will soon be hungry now he's, i'm the one who prepares your meal and then god will hear you how many wives dishonor their husbands because they are already married some come they think that just because they are married they dishonor when they get married they do all kinds of things it's nice two weeks after the marriage the man is just one one item i am joined with forever and god is hearing because the possibilities and the grace of that man will speak to every other person except the wife the same thing with the woman men will get married to women and think they are just rags the bible says submit come and do this whereas the man is not prayerful and that lady came as the reason even god told you that she's the reason why you are succeeding then the day you annoy her everything fails you go to god and god says like he told hagar go back you may not submit to the woman but you must submit to that possibility if you want a revival of that dimension Are you getting what i'm saying now this is true i am a product of what honor can do i am a product of what honor can do i am a product of what honor can do listen you will not be able to dig every well by yourself no matter how hard working you are your lifetime is too small to dig those wells there are wells that have already been dug those wells like jacob's well will last generations use honor as a fetcher to draw and draw again enough to feed you and feed a generation jesus went to a city and could not do mighty miracles what simple is this not the carpenter's son but there was a blind man when he was passing jericho for the last time he says thou son of david have mercy he didn't say can you have mercy mm -mm. i know you have it have mercy you you won't pass me have mercy and jesus said what should i do for you that i may regain my sight and his eyes open i continue to search for dishonor around my life so that i will correct it very fast i tell you any door that is closed there's something there is an element of dishonor that may be there if you are sincere 
why oh god am i surrounded by anointed people and i can never carry real grace dishonor why am i surrounded by wealthy people and i continue to remain poor dishonor why am i surrounded by wise people and i continue to be foolish again and again why am i surrounded by people who are on fire and there's no revelation they give you any scripture you can't say anything about it notice the gate men of men of god notice the chefs they don't have any revelation as if all they came to do was to cook can't you see that visitors that you are cooking for their lives are being changed and you continue to serve the food and receive tips whereas one day you say sir this chef i'm 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 is, is passion but i need results i've served your food now but i need something are you getting what i'm saying when i meet extremely great people i don't waste that time i don't sit down and say and sometimes ah my apostle great man and great this i just find a forum where we're alone and find a seat and say sir i decide i don't just say pray for me that's a stupid approach that's not honor you will never receive anything that way you must discern i know the difference between you and me the results show it i am not there yet simple and straightforward and i beckon on whatever grace that brought this result and with a passionate heart they will release everybody that has something knows it and they know when it leaves them to you hallelujah praise the lord this ministry is enjoying the blessings of the body of christ because of the honor of the body of christ i say this with all blessings we don't have a youtube channel as it were i don't know if the media has that but there is almost no message you will type and you will not find someone took it as a responsibility without payment it is because a sinner was sown and so it was sown to the body and the harvest also came from the body are you getting what i'm telling you now when it was time to, for the sick here this morning many of you came and you watched a benihim video first it doesn't mean i'm not anointed to pray for you but i know from whence you see let me tell you a river that forgets its source truly speaking you will dry up it's a matter of time you will dry up to nonsense and and not know where you came from again our proud generation continues to have results for a while and then it will disappear because the moment you have results most times people don't know the difference again somebody trained you in business now you have become a millionaire and you come to meet the person in the shop bros are you there you are an apprentice there and you come with your g-wagon and smile you have a g-wagon i have a g-wagon don't harass me i just came back from italy that's a foolish man one day you will not know the explanation why things will go down and you will go to god and he will give you the recommendation of hagar go back you are a great man but in the realm of the spirit you are still sarah's maid the law of honor the law of honor i shared with you my story that i wanted to go to the u.s to go and scrub the toilet of charles and francis hunter as a man of god not to go for a conference not to say just to let you know that there is a young man all the way from nigeria is by the name joshua selman is my humble self is that humility i was going to scrub the toilet not to go as a man of god oh i would have gladly scrubbed that toilet lord whatever grace will make a man to raise hundred wheelchairs in one meeting laugh at it whatever grace this is the law of honor many people don't know how to receive miracles 
when i talk like this you would think it's arrogance if i get up in the morning with my eyes blind by 6 p.m that eyes must have been open the desperation to receive is not there many people are too ashamed to really receive the woman with the issue of blood said get out of my way i'm the one who knows what i'm suffering shift let me touch the hem of his garment and the people were trying to embarrass her no let me touch the hem of his garment and she was healed don't violate this ordinance let me give you a few keys our time is gone we should pray i pray in the name of jesus that you will value this that i shared with you and you will watch how easy life can be keys to honor one wisdom there cannot be honor until there is wisdom you need a deposit of deep stone to manifest honor wisdom to know the protocol of greatness vashti was a foolish woman for one reason she lacked wisdom it was her wisdom that culminated to dishonor that made her pay the price there is no record of vashti going back to beg the king she forgot she was only queen because she married the king are we together no wisdom the king called on her to his chamber to come and flaunt the glory and she said no i have my own agenda and the elders came and said king do something about this woman if not other women will start doing the same thing and the king said vashti you are gone when sarah came study the book of sarah and see honor personified what most people see there is favor you are seeing the child look at the mother look at how the pregnancy started until the child called favor was born she meets the king on hearing that a wicked man called her man wants to destroy the people of god and the king said esther what do you want to half of my kingdom she said nothing oh king would you grant me the honor of hosting you to a banquet he said that is it is there any problem she said no yet there was an emergency lives were about to be she knew that in dealing with greatness timing matters not every time is the time you can just see your destiny help and say anything for the boys immediately he planned to give you a job because of that he will vow that your children's children will not get a job timing there are many people as soon as you see a great man the next thing you come sir uh, anything for us sir whereas the man was about to ask you young man what do you do we are looking for a secretary is it all right if we send you to our dubai office and you foolishly come with mediocrity and say sir you are looking as if i'm not so bad, but will you go like that you see stop that every time you see a great man your first element is not to beg listen to me and learn many young people continue to mess up you want one thousand they will give you one thousand yet you have lost access to their hearts are we together esther now tells the king let me host you he said all right let me come and try and esther prepared a permit me to use the word a wicked banquet when the king ate this she came again he said now i'm ready is there any request say no sir just grant me the privilege of doing this again and then another time she now said now i want it to be a feast of wine you know wine is a spirit in the bible she's about to make a request and she's making a request against the closest friend of the king what if the king says you want me to fight my friend i will kill you she knew the timing there was something that needed to happen for him because her man was his right hand man so when the king took the wine he was filled with that wine and he sat down and then she came what do you want esther and she said oh king there is a man who that wants to destroy me your one and only queen and my woman he said who is that he said that is the man that stands by your side wise king he left and went to a garden he didn't answer yet he left and went to the garden because the word of a king is a law 
and he said let me think first let me not talk foolishly will this decision be honorable many times silence is proof of wisdom you don't have to be under pressure to answer everything is God helping someone today do sweep it do it again by the second day do it again by the third day very soon somebody will call you and say why are you doing this you say well i i plan to have this kind of thing i'm a responsible person i have learned on i just feel i should do this every great man knows greatness when it even if it is in infancy they will look and say mm -mm, you they won't make you a manager they'll say okay keep sweeping a wise man will not call you immediately he will test the sincerity of your honor you say continue doing it just to know you are not a thief that's all and then he says watch this person and for six months you will sweep with nobody saying thank you but on the seventh day of ah, you know how bible talks you will come to sweep and see a car with a key and a letter inside open me say ah, i won't do this so i'm not a thief and you open it and that's the prayer request of someone for 10 years there is a key to every territory it's called honor you are sandwiched between people who are greater than you and people who you are greater than if you keep receiving honor from those who are greater than everybody will reach your level and leave you 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 have to keep rising too while you bring others up Are you getting what i'm telling you yes there is no program that is done in this ministry that i will not sow into it this ministry is a blessed ministry but even at that i must look for something and sow into it principles when your prayer life goes down is dishonor because it's proof that you are trying to show god you are the lord of your own life and he's watching you get up in the morning you yawn your way through a life you return back by the mercy of god and you will not understand that he kept you you will continue on till the day keke almost capsizes you and then you remember the scripture it is vain to wake up early and sleep night only to eat the bread of sorrow but it is god that gives men sleep and rest you will return back and say god i don't know what entered me but i'm back oh no we are going to pray wisdom number two let me rush it i apologize for taking our time this night the second key to honor is forbearance you cannot practice honor if all you have is forgiveness forbearance is a deeper dimension forbearance means it will happen again so you wire it into your system of honor that this person i honor is a noise maker i don't like noise but i have to prepare my mind to hear noise all the it's called forbearance adaptation is proof of honor the greater one will not be the one to be flexible and adjust to you you are the one who will have to stretch yourself are we together forbearance many of you cannot forbear great people let me give you a very big secret great people are difficult people the complexity around the systems that work in their life will not only need wisdom it will need forbearance there are many yes as you have to say without knowing what you are doing forbearance I'm not a fool. I can't continue to do a mumu in this office. I'm fighting for my rights. And they say, open the gate for him. Please leave this place. After two months, you find out that you had one stream of income coming by the mercy of God. And an erratic dishonor of five minutes is costing your children's school fees. Forbearance. Everybody say forbearance. A lot of Pentecostals have lost graces in the Orthodox circle because they don't have the forbearance you go to an anglican church and there's a long hymn you check how many verse stanzas six and the man leading will tell you when we get to verse five we'll sing it again he's enjoying what he said and you are you are sad you are you are nauseated you are angry you are already offended you're off by everything the chance and all of that whereas there was a grace there for you to get to forbear to forbear to forbear is not to forgive to forbear is to wire yourself to accredit everything 
Number three, the third key to honor is to pray for those you seek to receive from. You don't pray for a man you seek to receive from, you will not get anything. Let me tell you. Many people don't pray for those who they seek to receive from. Pray. Just by praying for them alone, Job 42 verse 10, you pray for those who have gotten, the friends of Job were not oppressed. He was wealthier and greater than them. But with respect to his predicament, they had become greater than him. And he had to submit to honor them by investing prayer. Job 42 and verse 10. He says, the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends, not himself. Number four. Genuinely celebrate those you honor. Not I service. Not, ah, bless God for Papa Oyedepo. Bless God for Papa Iadebo. And then you go to one godless discussion of three or four people he said don't mind all these fathers of faith i'm so disappointed I, I i hate them more it's just that if you say it now they will beat you so that's the real truth i really hate them but it's just that outside let me honor them no like noah they may be asleep but they are still seeing and they are still hearing and they will wake up and know who said what and who didn't say what sight happens whether you are asleep or awake paul was blind for three days yet he was seeing visions celebrate celebrate a ministry that is blessing you celebrate it a life that is blessing you celebrate that life genuinely celebrate them finally love the last key to genuine honor is love you cannot honor a man a principle a system and even the god that you do not love 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 i love the body of christ i love koinonia i love the workers i love the leaders from the depth of my heart and it has nothing to do with selfishness I wish we had time i wish we had time i wish we had time do you know the bible says listen carefully all that i've said about honor suggests to higher authorities but that's only one dimension of honor because you also have to honor people prophetically who are about to rise you don't just honor those who have risen they have plateaued and you have seen it but there are people who are about to rise you will need discernment 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 many of us will dishonor everybody lower than you and everybody who cannot give you anything sam what do you have to offer nothing I, please you are not worth my honor emeka you are a doctor i i need injection because i don't know where my leg is like i don't i i honor you wonderful except for the fact that you have registered your exit from sam's life before he rises the moment he rises he rises with you he has noted you that you qualify for exit from his life so the secret therefore and the jackpot is to honor all men because god is the lifter of men my brothers and my sisters you can you see me or little children here they come and match my cloth and sometimes the protocol wants to stop them i say leave it oh this debt they are matching they will buy the soap tomorrow they have the ability there are many of you who cannot play with children there are many who you 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 can dishonor and oppress anybody lower than you once anybody is higher than you you can lie down and roll on the ground but when there is anybody who doesn't have anything as of yet to give to you you destroy them you are making a big mistake the key to owning the future is to honor those who god is lifting for the future and jimmy will say it this way find a man who is rising and in that life listen let me tell you this you know there are many people who believe that just because they knew you and they were connected it means they are stakeholders no connection is not enough to be a stakeholder it must translate from a connection to an event 
relationships that are investments are the relationships that are worth maintaining an ordinary connection is not worth it an investment of time of resources imagine the people that knew you they don't know what god is doing in your life now they are looking at the you of five years and there is nothing comely there except for the fact that it will be like the twinkling of an eye one day they will be following on facebook and say ah, who is this you as though they ask god not to lift you and then you suddenly rise and you watch the way they casually and shamelessly call you it is so 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 and so call me back quickly no the person you want to call is not there again this is a newer version if your relationship was not an investment that could grow then it didn't yield anything are you get what i'm saying the easiest way to prosper is through relationships but relationship as an investment not a connection this is already a preview of tomorrow relationship as an investment not a connection this is what reverend dan and his wife are doing these are general overseers they left a boy and they left enugu not only to come and receive let me tell you it's not every time you need to receive there are times that you have to invest whether you are comfortable or not politicians know this business people know this someone will leave kenya and leave south africa to come for the birthday party of a two-year-old baby what has the baby done for him what of the hand that holds the baby that's where his paycheck comes from are we together so the woman with the alabaster box discerned that this man will one day be the king of kings and i have a terrible life what can i do to edge my relationship in this man's life and she took a a, a, a what they call it a box spike a year's wages and she did something she knew it would not be easy for any other person to do she smashed it at his feet and used her hair and jesus said anytime you are talking about me and the gospel you must make reference to this woman when we get to heaven you will know that you will not just see the difference it's in the bible i mean it's in the bible there are rankings based on relationship this is your bible the elders in heaven there the 24 living creatures what did they do to god that keeps them in the throne the angels in the throne they only and get messages and leave but they are creatures that stay. it's only god that is going to do when you see greatness don't ignore it turn your relationships from connections to investments you send a text may god bless you daddy may god bless you mommy they don't reply continue an investment you do returns immediately but it's working the day they are looking for good people to bless your sacrifice is too much you to be ignored hallelujah there are several men of god that is difficult for me to tell them no even when my schedules are already booked if they do come I will try to tell them find a way even if it's a weekday let's squeeze even if it's one day no problem let me honor them because of what they have done there are people when I see their missed calls provided I have the time even if it's two minutes I can even squeeze and just send a text and say I'm sorry I may not be able to talk to you now but I'll reply you all the debt it forces you to pay back We are gathered here for seven days and if god does not change our lives you can activate this system try it this night write down the five or ten people in your life that are most deserving of your honor and write down the top ten people in who make you a big deal anybody that makes you a big deal don't trivialize them because the whole world does not have that level of honor if you make me a big deal i will invest into your life make god a big deal and see what he does to you is somebody learning now yes when you find anybody in your life 
that thinks you are somewhat celebrating and makes you a big deal be wise enough to separate them and let me tell you this never give people access beyond their last level of honor don't make your life that cheap as you give people access watch for the honor that follows if the closer they get the more the honor goes down stop there stop from the last place of honor and remain there god is the one who prescribed this what you do in my parlor may qualify you for my kitchen may qualify you for my bedroom then may qualify you to my safe you don't come from the gates there are visitors that you look through the pigeonhole and say why are you here say i just need help you squeeze one thousand and say please go it's not it's not insult it's the level of relationship there are others you can open the gate and say okay what is it you say can't we get a shade and you have not that shade you see has a, a dimension there are others you say you are welcome there are others you say you are welcome as far as you want don't believe that everybody has the same access listen to me anybody that dishonors you don't fight them but peg them at the last place of honor and keep it there until there is a reason to transit and some of them sadly sadly may be people in ministry people in whatever kind of thing refuse that is someone learning this otherwise you would destroy yourself somebody will come and meet you and say give me a business advice you gave him a business advice yesterday and the person trivialized it made nonsense out of it when he was teaching it he didn't give credit and honor to you and felt it was not an issue then he says give me another one he said no no let your honor qualify you for the next access when you find people who the closer they come to you the higher the honor treasure them they are an endangered species the world does not have many of such people these are kingdom secrets my brothers and my sisters you should share the grace tonight knowing that a real key was given to you go to your office tomorrow and you see people who are undeserving of your honor and you will see the mistakes you have been making you told people secrets about your life secrets about your family secrets about your destiny secrets about certain things and they have no fortitude for honor everybody say honor oh, this is a powerful law powerful law to the degree to which you honor God he will bring you into his inner chambers he will say come let me show you the things you will not hear in a congregation come my son let me show you my ways these are the secrets of the lord that are with them that fear him and he will show you not his principles his covenants there are many of us we would have received certain things from our parents and our loved ones but sadly some of them went to the grave with secrets they never told you because dishonor made it difficult to get it across to you if this is all you know you have found something that can make you great god loves everybody but not everybody is his friend read your bible he didn't say you all are my friends mm -mm. i died for you yes you are my children yes i'm your lord yes but there are people he says you are my friend moses come to talk with you how are you today and he talks back to him he came in the cool of the day to talk to adam and talk to eve when dishonor happened he said that's it i preach we're going to pray this night lord i found the key i found the key this is the kind of meeting that afterwards you will send your pastors tonight and say pastor sir let me teach you how to honor in one minute many of you don't know how to honor god bless you for me sir it's not honor there are many people who have blessed my life just to let you know you are one of them that's foolishness that's not honor the goal of honor is to show someone that you perceive their uniqueness and the extent of their impact so you are going to within the context of the honor isolate them 
and give them an experience that will make you remain desirable in their eyes. Are we together? Just you know I'm blessed by your message. Commanding result. Thanks. That's not honor. That's expression. Honor must carry your discernment through it. Transfer your discernment to words and communicate it. Sam, I just want to let you know that I am grateful. There are so many worshippers and so people, but there's something about your voice and the grace of God upon your life. Every time you raise that song, my spirit is lifted. The other day you raised a song, you didn't know what, I was, ha what was happening to me. That's honor. He may forget what you said, but he will mark your face. The next time he sees your face, he will associate it with pleasantness and you become his friend. There are people whose persona reflect pungency. People avoid you because of a track record of what your persona and your face creates in people. It must change. That one is not an evil veil. It's a self-inflicted veil as a result of not discerning the law of honor. Every time I see this, my children, they honor me and you see how I, I hug all of them from the depth of my heart. There was one day, one of the other ones wanted to just come and hug and pat me in the back and I drew his ears. I said, don't do that again. You are a child. When you grow, we'll let you know you have grown. Now you are a child. When you are hug, hug with respect. You will be doing it because of my ego. It's a training. If not, you will lose touch. With Don't be afraid to correct people. Really love them. Sometimes we think that when you correct people, it's a proof of insecurity. Let them not say maybe they are rising. No. What then is the... If when you have labored over people, you are a stakeholder over their growth. There's nobody staying under my roof and under my care, physically or spiritually, that will go out of the boundary of discipline and correction. No. You choose to be a fugitive like a prodigal son, you will go. But provided you are within that house, there is a level of decorum that you should have. Is God blessing us? Yes. Teach your children to honor. Let a grown child not come and slap a visitor. Hold him, knock his head in front of the visitor and say, the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Forget the cry that is happening. The message is getting in. Whenever you see a man that has done what you have not done, don't think it was a mistake. Have the fortitude to give that respect. Those, who's, those who fight Kung Fu, you go to most of these places where they fight Kung Fu, these temples, you will see Bruce Lee's picture. It's still there. They stand and they respect it before they start fighting. The man is long gone. But they say, don't deceive yourself that because you are a black belter, you are Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was in a class of his own. Or there are bills now there are people every man of god is the same same holy spirit same god until your results prove otherwise honor does not kill honor does not reduce honor multiplies honor fast tracks listen to me my dear ladies let me tell you this master honor and you would have mastered the key to any man's heart gentlemen let me teach you this master honor will master the key to both the hands and the resources and the credibility of any man there are people i can endorse and i can stake my reputation even if they are wrong i will step in for them because they have communicated honor are we together tonight we are going to pray our time is gone but it's worth it this is this is the kind of meeting that will change your life that you will leave this place knowing that something has happened you didn't just come to fast and pray for nothing is someone ready to pray i'd like you to stand up and just think for one minute we're praying just for about five minutes but don't pray just 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 in the quietness of your spirit i want you to think of the doors that can open right now when you practice this law the Lord connected you to a consular officer. You would have had free access to visas if you maximize that moment and honor the person. You dishonor the person only for you to go and get a visa. You find out that it was him. 
one day you met with a ceo in a shopping mall you didn't maximize the moment now you are low a job and you suddenly realize the person is the ceo and the words that you spoke that day now stands against you i want you to think carefully the doors that would have opened oh lord i would have gotten that project so you gave it to me but dishonor retrieved it back from think of the levels of the anointing that you would have been working in right now it's not a very difficult thing for men to speak good about your life it's not a difficult thing for people to say lift this person lift this person lift this person but dishonor killed it does the influence of great people matter to you does the track record and the relationships they have does it matter to you do you think god can use it to lift you does the anointing of a genuinely anointed man matter to you do you think when that grace leaves you your life will change is discernment i'm not teaching you human worship i'm teaching you to begin to interpret things and people honor you find a way of reciprocating it back learn this today don't just collect honor don't just collect honor ah this apostle joshua selman take a seat kneel down lie down roll on the ground no as they sow that seed from it sow it back so that you create a harvest if children honor you honor them back if your contemporaries honor you honor them back if those above you honor you honor them back if those below you honor you honor them back let it be a system of honor you will look like a fool for a while you will look cheap for a while until the results separate you in a cadre that is incontestable you become the song in the mouth of every great man everyone is looking for a chance to lift you the way people call me all the time apostle is there something we can do for you apostle is this and that and i say i'm okay god is faithful can i and i say ah this is the honor honor when people think about you what comes to them is it the desire to lift you is it the desire to bless you let me tell you this this gentleman you see come kenny this kenny you are seeing this boy you see served for years this kenny will cook for me and do a lot of things as you are seeing many things happen around his life and he still made up his mind and i knew that i said this guy is going to be a great man of god one day i'm telling you this it's not just because he's here you see that gradually gradually god began to lift him in the grace of god upon his life almost every great man in this street that you see that you desire there is the story of their lifting except your own you want to route your lifting through a window an angel of justice will keep you there and say go back it doesn't happen that way it is only thieves that enter through the window there are people who are too big to serve in a department you can see shadrach where is he this is come this is the pastor of shadrach is the pastor of um of living word and he's one of the protocol people pastor francis is outside the assistant pastor this big man is in for nonsense without result is a cause from hell when you come and see great people serving let it be a lesson that you open your heart and say god whatever must land upon my life let it land let me tell you scattered in this ministry are men and women who have their own ministries and their own groups the grace upon their lives even some overseers don't have it yet they come and you see them quiet they just sit down there are people who come here and want to inconvenience everybody to say i'm around who do you think you are who sit down there and listen and learn so that when they rise tomorrow you don't say it's luck I love this my dear people and honor them you see me give them the right of way to do certain things and sometimes you are wondering is because honor has been proven when your honor has been proven the access becomes unlimited sometimes there can be something to do i can just sit back and allow them to be doing it and sometimes i come and i say no no no, let them continue 
there is a reason for it. Who knows you and whose track, your, who, who has a testament of your track record? There is nobody that rises from nowhere. You are the Lord of yourself, a boss of yourself. I shared with you my story that I played keyboard for Reverend Emmanuel Amechi for many years. Many years. No payment, no nothing. My own keyboard, I will carry it and trek to the hotel and play. The only thing I was ever given was one bottle of Fanta and one cassette. Oh no. When you sow that seed, then there is a grace you must carry. When you sow that seed, there is wealth that you must carry. Are you ready to pray? In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, grant me grace. Whatever pride that needs to be destroyed, is someone praying in my life and in this season, I have dishonored my parents spiritually, physically. I have dishonored those who have lifted me academically. I see my lecturers and I push them away just because I am now a graduate. I've seen my pastor and just because I'm now a man of God, I see the pastor that raised me and I dishonor him. Lift your voice and pray. Someone pray. He that honors me, I will honor. He that dishonors me, I will esteem. Are you praying? Listen. Listen. You are really going to pray from the pure heart and say, Lord, the eyes to see who is worthy of my honor and the unashamedness to communicate that honor, I receive the grace. Lift off your voice and pray. Your neighbor is a wealthy man. But you believe you are all neighbors. You have a relative that has never been out of job and yet you have been looking for a job for decades and you have not seen a need to honor that grace. Pray. You are trusting God to get married yet you insult every married person insult the wife insult the husband insult the children and you want the same blessing cannot work that way you want a flourishing ministry and you castigate everyone that God has helped Koinonia are you praying outside pray those online pray it's a secret it's an ordinance it's a system in the kingdom The principles that are supposed to lift you you dishonor them left right and center yet you want the same results no sir lord i receive grace i receive grace it's a season of extraordinary fruitfulness within these seven days grace grace i may look weak i may look cheap but let the blessings of honor distinguish me. Sharabagadabalash, embreke te parakato shabrede kadesh, rakata parato sedeba shebalahus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I like you in your mind where you are. The five or ten people you know in your life that have paid attention to you and have truly communicated honor listen not those you want to honor those who have honored you and have said sam i respect you i honor you you know anybody that has made you a big deal lift your voice and bless them and pray for them from your heart lift your voice and bless them if it's the people in your department bless them 
it is the people in your life bless them lord you must lift my brother lord you must lift my sister they have honored me they have discerned the grace of god upon my life they have invested in my grace is someone praying Shali sabaranda kaposha brigades ekete palakata bragado sedekeshia hallelujah the last prayer point and then we round up this house you see is a buffet of graces dimensions and possibilities there are dimensions that you have seen in this house that you have not yet seen in your life you have seen marriages that work and your marriage is knows diving you can tap into that grace you have seen the grace of god you have seen different levels where you are now you are going to provoke the dimension that is set in your life and say lord genuine honor true genuine honor honor sincere honor from the depth of my heart i enter this possibility lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray lord i have seen amazing men and women of god in this ministry they may not know me but lord i honor them from the secret place lord i've seen great children in this ministry i honor them with all my heart i've seen the elderly ones in this ministry i honor them with all my heart please pray hallelujah hallelujah let me add the last prayer point the holy spirit is just ministering to me father any door that is unclosed by the mercy of god reopen it for me lift your voice pray passionately pray passionately lord i would have been working in the oil company right now this honor close the door by your mercy open it again open it again open it again open it again oh god there are dimensions of the healing grace that would have been at work in my life this honor closed it reopen those fountains so called in the name of jesus there are dimensions of wealth that would have been at work in my life reopen it oh god there are dimensions of influence and speed there are dimensions of your presence signs and wonders there are dimensions of the revelatory grace reopen it oh god reopen it oh god reopen it it's closed over my father it closed over my mother it closed over my siblings but i come on call representing my family reopen the ancient doors reopen the ancient mantles my father was once a man of god now nobody serves god in my family reopen the doors oh god my mother was a prosperous woman now they live from hand to mouth what closed the door to that door reopen it oh god i once used to see visions now i no longer see i once used to be the friend of everybody now everybody hates me reopen the door of honor hallelujah hallelujah in the name above all names i declare every door that did not close in your life 
by the mercies of God I command that door open now I command that door open now any man who trivialize your grace trivialize your wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that God will lift you before them and may they see your, the hand of God upon your life I pray for you the grace and the humility to both discern and honor graces scatter around the body receive that grace I declare may you never be the reason why you destroy any ministry any church any fellowship in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you may God multiply those who discern and honor your grace I say it again may God multiply those who discern and honor your grace may this one key beginning from this night start turning and changing things in your life you will work wonders in, our midst tonight. in the name of Jesus Christ in Jesus name amen God bless you please be seated it's my joy to be here thank you I love you too hallelujah praise the Lord Pastor Bodaji, thank you sir thank you so so much thank you I appreciate you hallelujah um, I just want to squeeze in on every time that I have so that we can make progress John chapter 16 from verse 13 Jesus was teaching just to buttress on what pastor said before calling me up he said how be it when the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth he was stressing the necessity for the ministry of the Holy Spirit and truthfully speaking it's not just a Pentecostal idea it's not a denominations idea it is true that outside of the Holy Spirit we are not worth much in ourselves it is the Holy Spirit that adds the weightiness It's the Holy Spirit that um, makes for our relevance and it's important that we understand that outside of the Holy Spirit the believer is not worth much hallelujah and the Bible says that when the Holy Spirit comes he will not only talk to you he will guide you that means you must be guided for truth to profit you just because there is truth does not mean you will profit from it you must be guided hallelujah praise the Lord um, we'll discuss a few things um, and let's see wherever we stop tonight we'll just stop and walk with the time and I thought in my heart what the Lord would have me share and pastor you know I'm very careful over the things that I share as a man of God when you preach for a while you always have something to say but then it is important that your communication is that which the Lord desires for the moment the Bible says my heart is indicting a good matter yea I speak of excellent things then it says my tongue is the pen of a ready writer praise the Lord that means we have to speak that which is consistent with God's counsel for it to be edifying and the Lord put something in my heart that I think is very powerful and would help believers to mature and to help us to be able to rise to new dimensions i'm teaching tonight very briefly on priesthood first peter chapter 2 and verse 19 priesthood verse 9 verse 9 now please look up in scripture believers are called many things the Bible has a very unique expression of God's idea about the believer. The believer is called many things in scripture. Jesus himself teaching in what we call the Beatitudes. He called believers light. He called believers salt. Apostle John said, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we are called sons of God. The Bible calls us ambassadors. The Bible calls us many things but then the Bible also calls us kings 
and priests are we together now there is a description of man the believer according to the image of christ that is reflecting in him and there is the description of man according to his functionality when it has to do with functioning like christ the bible says we are kings and priests so apostle peter is teaching us something here and he says you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood or a priesthood of kings a holy nation peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light the bible tells us that we are kings and then it also says that there is the priesthood ministry of the believer now i'm interested in the priesthood ministry of the believer because it is very important and is the context of our discussion we are priests there is the ministry of priesthood according to scripture in revelations chapter 1 when you read from verse 4 to 6 revelations chapter 1 let's just look at a few scriptures and then i begin to build from there john to the seven churches which are in asia let's jump to verse 5 please the emphasis is verse 6 and from jesus who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood please read with me verse 6 together one to read and hath made us kings and priests unto god and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever the bible says he has made us kings and he has made us priests chapter 5 and verse 10 john is still receiving revelations in heaven and the bible says that we have been made kings and priests unto god and we shall reign on earth now this is very important because he tells us uh, that we are kings and priests then he now tells us the jurisdiction of our dominion that the reality of our kingship and our priesthood should be exerted within this territory of god's kingdom are we together now very 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 important the priesthood of a believer is is very important now i don't want to go into the theological um exegesis of priesthood the kinds of priesthood and so on and so forth that's not the concern tonight i just want to draw up something and then we pray this is wine pressed hallelujah praise the lord most believers do not understand the responsibility that priesthood demands now please listen very carefully the principles of dominion and i just just while on my way coming i was just going through the theme for the year the prophetic word for the year and i said wow this is amazing um we love to expand we love to think and speak dominion and that's powerful but there are principles that will make for the experience of the same and one of it is understanding priesthood our inability to understand the priesthood of a believer will keep us disadvantaged in spite of everything that has been wrought in christ now i love god because this is a bible believing church and this is a church that is theologically sound and and so i'm comfortable to share some of the things that i share i have i believe that i have pointed that here and is worthy of repetition that spiritual realities listen please spiritual realities are are twofold in their operation number one realities as from the standpoint of the christ it is always finished because god does not work with time his realm is not even eternity eternity is time without end god's realm is light god's realm is now there is no tomorrow there is no later in god's realm everything is now now are we together now but in executing the will of god the men that receive that word from god his prophetic speakings are limited by time and there is a reason why god put us in time many reasons um, there's no time to do that teaching if there were no time there would not be a possibility for mercy and forgiveness 
because God tied his mercy to time the Bible says they are new every morning are we together now <laughs> it's the reason why when the beings in the realm of the spirit defaults there is no forgiveness there is judgment straight up and they are bound in everlasting chains so the saints have an advantage living in time are we together now and so that 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 itself already shows us that realities that are finished from god's realm must have a technology of finding expression within our domain this is where the problem is for many believers because on one side we acknowledge god does not speak to men like he's speaking to men he speaks to men like he's talking to himself so god will talk to you as though the house were built god talks to you as if your children are already saved god talks to you as if the prosperity is already there because he's not lying it is his reality he can't pretend it are we together there's no tomorrow there's no later so when god says i will bless you he's downgrading himself just for your understanding in his realm there is no later are you getting the point now but now you come down to the realm of man you have to understand the principles of transferring this spiritual reality to become your experience if you lack this spiritual intelligence you will continue to confess you will continue to believe that is profitable but your life may never capture that experience are we together i give you an instance the bible says from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain are we together now but jesus had to come in the flesh when he came to the earth he came as the word the logos of god who now became flesh are we together walked for 30 years learned the law became matured went to the cross and paid the price of sin in detail your sin was not casted by a word he went through a process that made his speaking become a reality as powerful as god was and is he did not cast sin out of man he had to go through the protocol that will make the remission of sin an experience are we together the bible says no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick but then he continues to release graces upon people so that they will actualize that experience someone may be respectfully speaking maybe on a wheelchair or holding a crutch now in god's mind that is an anomaly for instance but it does not stop the fact that that is the person's experience here and now so he grants us access to his word and his spirit to superimpose the realities as seen from his realm this is what it means in the lord's prayer let it be done in earth as it is in heaven it's already a reality there but you must sustain an intelligence to make it true here and now so all that we teach i'm saying this because it's important to understand the context of communications like this they are not an attempt to sabotage the finished work of god of christ they are an attempt to partner with the holy spirit in the manifestation of those truths that have been finished forever oh lord your word is settled not on earth in heaven it's settled in heaven it will take this is why he gave us the holy spirit we would not need the holy spirit if there were no need to engage these truths to make it true in our lives are we together so the holy spirit was given to us the word of god was given to us pastors were given after god's heart all these systems to coordinate us to a point where we are strengthening our understanding colossians chapter 1 verse 9 apostle paul is praying and speaking over the church in Colossae that they they be filled with the knowledge of his will number one number two that they be filled with all wisdom and number three that they be filled with all spiritual understanding because when we are filled with these truths then they will help us to manifest to manifest to manifest these realities are we together so we're back to our teaching very quickly priesthood we're dealing with priesthood that the believer has a priesthood dimension and you will need the understanding of priesthood to make manifest everything that has been declared for as according to god's word very quickly i want us to look at just one of the duties of priest first peter chapter 2 please 
first peter chapter 2 my god verse 5 first peter chapter 2 and verse 5 everyone please read with me apostle peter is teaching us ready ye also as lively stones uh -huh, are built up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to do what to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ and so we see here that priesthood is tied to sacrifices that we have been made priest and that part of the jurisdiction of our priesthood ministry would require offering up sacrifices unto god this is very important are we together now and the primary listen very carefully the primary medium for offering the sacrifice of priesthood of the believer is prayer please write it down prayer the prayer ministry of the believer is one of the major dimensions of his operation as far as priesthood is concerned so prayer for the believer is not just an activity that has been endorsed by spiritual leaders it's not just um, a dimension that was demanded for from scripture it is more than an opportunity to petition god it is more than an opportunity to um um call for help from heaven priesthood is a ministry say unto archippus that you take charge of the ministry that thou has received from the lord that thou fulfill it so the prayer ministry of the believer is priesthood are we together now this is very very important The church has been on a season of fast and prayer and just feasting on the word this is this is an engineering to bring stability to our priesthood so that through the ministry of fasting the ministry of prayer and engaging the word that every believer comes to a point where we are solid we are stable and we are strong this is a very very noble pursuit and this happens year in year out everybody say prayer, prayer. one more time please say prayer in luke chapter 18 verse 1 just touch a few scriptures and then i just build and will pray jesus spake a parable the bible says to the end that men ought always to pray that means you are only exempted from prayer if you are not a man provided you are a man prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is not for men of god prayer is for men he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians 5 17 the bible says pray without season it doesn't mean pray from morning till night it means be consistent be consistent in your prayer life james 5 when you read from verse 13 down the bible says is any man afflicted he says let him pray then the bible says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much are we together and then the bible now uses a personality to personify the ministry of prayer it says elijah was a man of like passion and that he prayed earnestly over a space of three and a half years that there be no rain and then there was no rain and he prayed again and rain came that means there was nothing special as it were about elijah except that when he stepped into that dimension of priesthood he functioned like god are we together now this is very very important prayer is important one time jesus was with the disciples and having a conversation with peter he rebuked peter and said peter satan desired to sift you like wheat he didn't say i advised you he didn't say i counseled you so instability is remedied by prayer he has desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he says when you are converted use this same strategy to strengthen your brethren that means when you see them swaying is proof that something is happening to their priesthood you must get them back to the point where they pray that men ought always to pray and not to faint that men ought always to pray and not to faint that men ought always to pray and not to faint 
one of the dominion systems allocated for the saints is the ministry of prayer it's a principle of spiritual legislature god gave us authority listen very carefully over principalities and powers and so on and so forth listen a believer who does not pray will not be able to walk in the full expression of the counsel of god this is true for many reasons number one because god gave man a will this is very important one of the fundamental things there are seven fundamental things god gave man not a believer man as the zenith of his creation one of it is the power to choose are we together i said before you blessing and cursing life and death i only advise you i will not force you so god gave man the power to choose the power to choose mandates that you must always god cannot assume that you need his assistance god cannot assume that you need help god cannot assume that you need the intervention of heaven you must verbalize your request you must verbalize your need you invite god to your life on legal basis even salvation is not imparted outside of your will he loves you and he's made the way but he will allow your desire and your hunger to call upon him the lord is nigh them that call upon him not them that need him them that call upon him are we together please so the fact that god gave man a will he is ever ever respectful of that will i can choose to ignore god i can choose as an act of my volition that lord i'm not interested in your program for my life and he will honor it at the expense of the eternal destiny of many god still allows them to declare their need for him there are people going to hell every day in spite of the fact that the substitutionary sacrifice of christ is a done deal are we together this is very very powerful prayer is important your priesthood is important because it is the system that outsources strength from a dimension that is not earthly number two prayer is the highest proof of humility because it's proof that you acknowledge you're incapacitated in yourself prayerlessness is pride when people are prayerless it is because they have found a way to flatter themselves into believing that outside of god they are still sufficient apostle paul was teaching us and he says we do not claim to be sufficient in ourselves he said he said our sufficiency is of god who has made us abled ministers when i go to god in prayer is a declaration of humility is proof that i need him is proof that i'm not trivializing his relevance in my life hallelujah we must pray as proof of humility the third reason why we must pray is that prayer is a spiritual system of transporting realities from the realm of the spirit to this realm it's a dominion system it's a system of spiritual legislature paul was giving us the the revelation on how spiritual things happen in hebrews chapter 11 the bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for he calls it the evidence of things not seen are we still together he says for by it this faith this technology the elders obtained a good report and then verse 3 says through faith we understand that the cosmos the worlds were framed by the word of god okay now this is a technology so that things which are seen were not made of things which appear that means the mother that gives birth to the realm of the spirit or the physical realm is the realm of the spirit that everything that appears comes from a realm and a dimension that is higher than this realm listen believers please listen listen everything you need everything you imagine is only possible because it already exists what you call creation is only creation from this realm from the standpoint of the spirit is only transportation now this this is the basis upon which your faith is built so you are not hoping things will happen it's already a reality 
you only call it creation when it manifests in the earth realm but just because you have not seen it does not mean it does not exist the bible says why we look at the things which are seen or why we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are unseen unseen not unreal unseen just because your eyes cannot capture it in your space does not mean it's not there everything you are looking for is also looking for you there is a system to be able to transport it to your domain the ability to make what is far from you come to you is dominion are we together that the opportunity the open door the influence that is far from me i sustain an intelligence to compress time and bring it to myself now that's real dominion because everything we need for life and godliness has been provided for the bible did not say it was is within your domain but it's in the earth you must sustain the intelligence to draw things from wherever they are that was the morale of the miracle of the bones in ezekiel 37. it was a revelation to show you that the concept of distance is relative that there is a technology that can bring things that are apart and make sense of them are we blessed the principle of spiritual legislature that means i don't need to feel bad about what is not there there is an intelligence in the place of prayer i can call a helper in the place of prayer i can call opportunities i can create possibilities i can from the standpoint there it's true this is how the great rise it is vain to run away to pursue things individually you can coordinate them like a control room in the place of prayer knowing listen very carefully knowing that every physical thing every including men are only listen very carefully every physical thing in the earth is a reflection of what controls it are we together please let me have one person any one person at all come sir if this man comes to me to bless me hold this and give it to me if this man comes to me to bless me you think he just came he may even think he just came but the realm of the spirit says nobody just comes now listen very carefully it's impossible for him to just come because a body without a spirit is dead there must be an agency so i have sustained an advantage to manipulate possibilities to my domain without forcing them i can make this man bless me without manipulating him because i can talk to the father of spirits the father abba the owner the controller the manipulator of every spirit sit down are we together so this man comes he can leave and i don't feel sad because i can make him come again thy kingdom your influence favor lifting speed so in the place of prayer you coordinate these possibilities as though in a control room and you are there manipulating things and you come out and play life like a chess and you watch possibilities arrange themselves listen i'm not trying to motivate you this is priesthood the excellency the advantage of your being connected to the spirit is seen at the point of priesthood you define your possibilities hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done listen the priesthood ministry of the believer allows you to define the possibilities that you desire to be in your life you see the realm of the spirit is like an actor's script that is unedited it takes your priesthood to choose which scenes 
you, you know how you act a film a movie there are all kinds of scenes at the point of acting but when the movie is released you don't see some scenes again prayer gives you the opportunity to select what must manifest in the realm of the spirit destruction is a possibility in the realm of the spirit speed is a possibility in the realm of the spirit delay is a possibility in prayer you have the opportunity to rise to a dimension and select the truths that are consistent with the character of scripture and allow this is what it means to bind and lose to allow for possibilities that must happen and it so happens that after a period of time if you do not select life was mandated to select for you and it's dangerous to outsource selection that is out of you will select things that you do not want to see priesthood hallelujah thank you sir the final reason i'll give it to you very quickly you won't believe that i've not even touched on what i want to share at all just no 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 we'll, we'll walk with time praise god now please look up the final reason why we must pray is found it's a very strange scripture that not many people um not many people look at first thessalonians chapter 2 please from verse 18 paul was teaching the church in thessalonica he was showing them a very powerful mystery read it with me if you're a christian one to read please uh-huh one more time please once and again meaning i tried and tried again wherefore your favor would have come to you he tried once and again but satan hindered us wherefore your testimony would have happened since last year march but once and again a system of resistance the bible is not silent as to the fact that we are not alone in this side of god's kingdom the bible is not silent as to the fact that there are operations of darkness that attempt to sabotage the liberty of the saints paul took time to give us a sound theological exegesis theologically speaking the book of ephesians is believed to be the zenith of paul's apostolic ministry and he showed us the the strategy to ward off the arsenals of darkness are we together now wherefore we would have come we would have come your breakthrough your lifting the manifestation of prophecy but satan hindered us the bible lets us know that satan is not afraid to arise and challenge believers it is true from scripture that satan is bold enough to challenge every word that god communicates to a believer in fact the bible shows us the the operation of satan in a very instructive way jesus is done fasting look up please brothers and sisters i think i've shared it here somewhere jesus is done fasting and the first person he meets after his version of wine press is not his disciples is satan satan is patient with jesus and after 40 days imagine the word the logos of god with the holy ghost in him and on him anointed without measure now prays to fast for 40 days this spiritual combination and the first person he sees is satan and satan is not shaking and falling under the anointing satan is standing in front of jesus and he's the first to broker a conversation turn this stone to bread and the word is spoken now this is rema and satan does not fall he does not run away now i'm not downplaying the power of god i'm showing you something that should challenge you what exactly is satan afraid of because the word is there the spirit is there the anointing is there faith-filled utterances are there and satan is still standing then satan takes it to another dimension he holds the hand of jesus and takes him to a high mountain you are holding the word filled with the spirit and dragging him 
Elohim Adonai Thy kingdom come Thy will be done Elohim Adonai Thy kingdom come Listen to me Everything good Is why Satan will come to you Satan has no business coming to you until he sees that the jealousy of God has been invested towards your destiny. He's looking for everything God wants. When God looks at you, he wants to know why. When God zooms his attention on your family, he wants to know why. Satan is threatened every time he sees the direction of God towards you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with my loving kindness. The moment Jesus was born, the spirit of the Antichrist began to move through people to look for him, to kill him. He became uneasy. The day a declaration came from heaven, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Satan never looked for anybody again, including Barabbas. He left Barabbas quietly because he was looking for a man who was a representation of God in the earth. Please listen to me very carefully. It is important to pray because it is at the point of priesthood that we, we establish victory experientially. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 5. Paul was putting a very strong balance. He was bringing the, the psalm of David about man and he was teaching us something that we must understand. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Verse 6, please. But in a certain place he testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, not the son of man that thou visitest him? 7. But thou hast made him lower than Elohim. The word there is Elohim, God himself, not just angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. Listen and thou didst set him over the work of thy hands verse 8 thou hast put all things where in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing this is the speakings of god you see how god speaks he left nothing that is not put under him but come back to this realm now we do not yet see all things reality is finished from God's standpoint but in experience we do not yet see it so priesthood becomes the bridge between prophecy and experience that that which is finished can find expression to become manifest hallelujah it is true that when you live your life barren of priesthood you may never never see in experience the salvation of god so jesus himself would get up early and go to pray the logos of god prayed the logos of god prayed he prayed every day he prayed every time even at his passion he prayed my house shall be called the house of prayer the house of priesthood not just the house of fellowship not just the house of teaching my house shall be called the house of prayer it was whilst the apostles prayed and fasted then the holy ghost spoke unto them and said separate me paul and barnabas we must pray because there are arsenals of darkness that continue to wage war against the victory of the saints and prayer becomes the platform to ward off these operations of darkness when you study the book of acts the bible tells us that one time james was beheaded herod beheaded james and it pleased the jews and then he caught peter and peter was kept he was bound hand in chain and then he was uh, there were all kinds of military people around but the bible says the church prayed the moment the church prayed the bible records that an angel came and when he came he tapped peter picked peter and begin and, and, and he began to walk him out until he got to the iron gates that led to the city and then peter was thinking he was in a vision 
until he got back prayer when done with understanding is powerful we're talking of priesthood here is god blessing anybody yes one day things will change is a joke it will take priesthood to manipulate possibilities and turn your night to day time does not change anything time only reveals it will take your insistence in fact here's how the bible puts it resist the devil resist the devil he will not flee because he wants to there is a resistance i desire to come to you once and again even i paul but satan hindered us i hate to be a bearer of bad news but just because prophecy comes does not mean it will manifest this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you war a good warfare with the prophecy with the prophecy with the prophecy the word of god has come upon my life this year that i am the head and not the tail i understand there is a devil somewhere who will want to take advantage of my background he will want to take advantage of the fact that my family is not connected to influential people to manipulate me but i stand in the position of priesthood to veto those disadvantages that's prayer that's priesthood many believers pray but few believers understand priesthood most of our prayers for many believers is just full of wise sayings and all kinds of things god why me that's not prayer are we together heaven helps those who um, help themselves that's that's not you see some of those things are very emotional things but they are, that's not prayer there are times that you will need to stand like habakkuk and pray stand upon your watch set yourself upon the tower you can know when things begin to go in a way and manner that is not consistent with the character of the christ that's not the time to discuss that's not the time to hope even if you don't know what is going on you filter the error you filter what is happening is in the place of prayer you will gain clarity the bible says one time the apostle listen very carefully that the apostle had escaped from um the island called melita remember he told the people there shall be no loss and then the bible says that the ship went and settled in an island called melita and when they came out because it was cold they were trying to enjoy the fire and the bible says he was there with them and a viper the viper was hiding but it was the fire that made the viper come out the viper was there in the log but it was hiding so when that prayer comes it can mount pressure on the viper to reveal itself the devil can be hiding around your finances hiding around your family it will take fire upon that wood to reveal the viper is god speaking to us priesthood when believers do not understand this idea of priesthood they become weak they continue to hope that things will happen they continue to write down prophecies they continue to just mesmerize around prophecies and the word of god and it never gains ground men ought to pray and not to faint it is priesthood priesthood when you pray I need assistance from a realm and a dimension that is higher than the three-dimensional realm and you are able to call upon God and the Lord is nigh them that call upon him Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says call unto me and I will answer I will answer not I will come I will answer in response to your call then I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know great and mighty things that you do not know when you pray things begin to shift in your life listen you an attack on your prayer life is a real attack listen very carefully it's an attack on your priesthood it's not just an attack on your spirituality it's an attack on your priesthood you will never be able to walk in the experience of dominion when you do not have a track record of prayer are we together spiritual legislature 
in the name of Jesus I call for destiny helpers in the name of Jesus I declare my path is as a shining light it shines ever brighter this is priesthood you are in your room in the name of Jesus I program January I program February no chances no excuses I program it I declare by the Spirit of the Living God the job is coming I'm speaking listen you are not just you are not just doing some Pentecostal nonsense the word of a king has power the Bible tells you the name of Jesus ah, the hand of God is upon my life I'm called Beulah Hefzibah you expect to be favored are we together and suddenly someone wakes up from his bed and starts thinking about you no sir people don't just think about people the Spirit of God is moving in honor to your priesthood and now he's causing someone who has forgotten you three years five years ah, how are you how is everything and you say fine you are not surprised you knew what you did how are you um, it's been a while I hear you are in Lagos where do you live and the Holy Spirit speaks to him that's not the issue give him the house I hope you I hope you 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 know that I'm not just joking I'm not just it is true you see let me tell you when you understand priesthood your life becomes a miracle and a wonder first to you and then to those who see you because physically looking at you you will not add up but you will operate by a mystery that will continue to scare people this is listen 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 this is what makes galatians 1 24 a wonder that men will glorify god in you not just for you not just through you you have become an extension of spiritual possibilities that vetoes your background vetoes anything that is supposedly a disadvantage what then is the excellency of the ministry of the holy spirit what then is the advantage of the word all of the spiritual arsenals that the saints have this is what makes us a chosen generation a peculiar people our exposure to marvelous light the light of priesthood i'm not disadvantaged it's true and it's not just by shouting it you can shout it and remain there for many years until you finally say look it looks like i'm, I'm really disadvantaged <laughs> And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Huh. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Let me show you one dimension of priesthood and then we'll pray. Have you been blessed so far? The Bible says priesthood is about sacrifice. Now listen very carefully. Priesthood is about sacrifice. Now, most times believers, even those who teach about sacrifice, whether it's finance or what service in the house of God, the truth is that respectfully speaking, most times we teach it from a fleshly standpoint. And so it does not provide the power that the Bible says should come from it. Are we together? When Peter had a vision and he was sent to the house of Cornelius, the testimony that led to that encounter was the fact that the prayers of Cornelius and then his giving watch this please please understand this you will bless God and you will thank me for this revelation that I give you it will be a powerful tool that you will close and open doors with the priesthood of believers when you make spiritual intercession when you command possibilities listen carefully listen carefully please the bible gives us a very powerful mystery in the book of revelation that the old heaven and the old earth will one day pass away now this is powerful 
a physical space will one day move to where we do not know so automatically we know that physical scenarios can move they are living things are we together a life and a destiny that is full of pain is a physical scenario akin to an old heaven and an old earth that there is a technology that can move a sin out of a man's life and bring another one follow me please now he says that in terms of the new jerusalem but it's a principle you must understand that means that i must find a way and i can find a way to close certain seasons in my life and open others if the old heaven and the old earth can go away then it means anything in my life i can choose that the time has come for a phase of my life to go away and i want to show you the technology that controls that outcome pray in the spirit for one minute please pray in the spirit for one minute in the name of jesus I pray that you will use this truth and reprogram your life and turn your life and your destiny into a wonder please let me have your attention for a few minutes we're going to pray Genesis 8 22 please look up the Bible says that when the earth was judged the earth was judged with flood flood is one of the elements of the supernatural is water and then the animals came and Noah offered it was a sacrifice please look up of all of the clean beasts he offered sacrifice and then the Lord smelled a sweet savour from it and made a proclamation that is very very prophetic it says while the earth so the earth is involved in this talk look up please while the earth remains seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease it's an ordinance that came from the mouth of god are we together now that seed time and harvest shall not cease now watch this the principle of what in the body of it's been known for many years and not many people have understood it is called the principle of seed faith listen very carefully please listen Great men like Ora Roberts and Kenneth E. Hagin and great fathers of faith, patriarchs who have gone transited in glory. They did their best to explain it as best as they understood. But remember, revelation is progressive. Are we together now? Yes. So they communicated the perspectives that God gave to them. But one of the advantage of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry is that you are given illumination by the spirit to see and then you are granted the grace that can make all men see. Ephesians 3 is a grace that makes men see. Not just men hear, men see. Insight, illumination, understanding. Now please look up. The principle of seed faith, please look up, you're about to learn something that will change your life forever. The principle of seed faith is the only principle that is able to mimic what Jesus did. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he said, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Are we Bible students? And that means that the principle of resurrection is such that the seed dies, not that the seed enters the ground entering the ground is not death 
death therefore is not the cessation of life it is the gateway into another realm we call it the says listen 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 you have to understand this that means the door that leads to life is called death death is not a dead end death is a door when you want to go into life you follow the door called death now watch this that means watch this please oh dear when jesus was about to end a dispensation and begin another one he followed the door of death are we together now and in dying in his resurrection he brought many sons into glory do we agree now that is the same principle that happens with your seed the bible says that when you sow a seed and agriculture attests to the fact that when you sow a seed for a while that seed follows that door too you call it death it literally dies and then suddenly something begins to happen another life are we together now and then it produces after its kind are we together now the principle of seed faith is based on death and resurrection not money that means whatever is tied to that seed as the seed dies it must die are you getting the point now i can take everything in my life my trouble my pain my frustration and tie it to the seed the moment the seed dies the law declares that that dimension of my life must follow the seed to the grave and die too so i can end seasons in my life and open another one and the mystery here is found in um, first corinthians 15 please look at this verse 38 that god is able to give your seed another body this is still priesthood i can and shame and not have more shame as a harvest god can change the body of what died and make it laughter because seeds should produce after their kind but that there is a technology because there are some things you want to kill you don't just want more of look at this when you sow corn it's because you want more corn are we together now when you sow rice is because you want more rice but there are times in the technology of God, there are times you sow certain things to kill them, not because you want more of them. And so that your faith can reconvert that manifestation, so that it is not what died that comes out as the harvest. God is able to give your seed another body. That means I can sow shame, I can sow delay, and tie it to a seed and bury it as that seed dies my shame too dies my delay dies now i'm not going to get more delay as a harvest i may get speed god can reprogram that delay and what will come as a harvest is speed this is priesthood we can use seeds with understanding to end seasons and open others but god giveth it a body as it had pleased him and to every seed its own body i can sow in tears and not reap more tears i can reap joy it's, it looks like a deviation of the law because every seed gives birth after its kind if i sow shame i should reap more shame but you can sow it because you want to kill it listen there are things in your life that need to come to an end and i'm telling you just saying it must come to an end is not enough he programmed the earth as a system of advantage for you that you can carry a seed with understanding not manipulation with understanding and begin to list the seasons that must come to an end if the old earth and the old heaven can pass away then everything in your life can also pass away so you can end seasons lord i do not experience favor in my life i move forward but by struggle that scenario is like an old heaven and an old earth you can tie it to a seed that's why i said it somewhere and um let me say it here it is dangerous to steal money in the house of god because you don't know what who is killing with the seed is dropping if you pick a seed that has not died 
what is on it is also alive it's true you see what went wrong with judas because people were sowing seeds and judas was helping himself judas did not just die of frustration many things killed him someone's suicidal thoughts was sown away in that seed and he kept receiving it and did not allow it die your seed can program certain seasons in your life it is still part of priesthood now the the, the challenge is that because i guess because most seeds come as money and and so most people think that it is just a church manipulation to extract seeds from people now respectfully speaking i know that here and there sometimes people do not approach this subject of seed with integrity and and all of that but that does not mean that the principle is not true there are people who are long overdue to enter certain strong seasons and if god sowed jesus to get us then it is important for you to understand that you can bury certain seasons and open up others and there are times that god can give speed please hear what i'm telling you the things i tell you are the things that i do i have ended seasons in my life and open others it's not just the will of god you enforce it through priesthood remember that priesthood is about sacrifice the sacrifice of spiritual legislation in prayer the sacrifice of warfare in prayer and drum your spiritual climate using the power and the technology of the seed it is true and it works that you can choose to say lagos is a place of abundance and blessings and god is a god of portions that means there is a portion allocated for me rehobot there is a space that has been given to me but it is refusing to come and so you can call forth all of the lack the limitation and tie them to a seed as that seed dies you start rejoicing because you are looking forth for the harvest it works wonders and it is true the integrity of god is at the back of it many people have unconsciously receive testimonies from these principles and you just hear them say look i was tired i was tired and then i sowed the seed and things change but god is adding to our understanding it is not the money that brings you the sacrifice it is the priesthood the revelation of priesthood that is back of it is what is responsible the second reason why the ministry of priesthood is powerful is because you see the anointing the word anoint is an ordination it's a system of authorization that allows you to function in an office it was an ancient system that was used for kings priests prophets to anoint doesn't just mean to spare with oil to anoint means to legitimize your operation are we together now that means that you are not illegal as far as that function is concerned there is a throne in heaven that backs your operation that's what it means to anoint so when the bible says how god anointed jesus he was authorized to function in that office of the christ when the saints are anointed we are given authorization on legal grounds the sons of Sceva were not anointed by the Holy Spirit. That was why the demon said, no, this operation, although you used to get results, but it's still illegal because the Holy Ghost is not the sponsor of it. There is no legitimate ground upon which you should operate that way. Are we together now? And now, please watch this. Listen very carefully. When, when the anointing of the Holy Spirit is his ability at work in a man is god's very ability at work in a man now watch this please the anointing and all kinds of graces are in dimensions and they are in levels anointing is not general anointing just because you are anointed does not mean anointed once and it can solve every problem that's not accurate are we together now that's not accurate if that were so the disciples would not need to be filled with the holy spirit again and the bible would not make reference to the lavish dimension of jesus is being anointed how god anointed jesus it took out time to tell us the extent of the anointing please watch this 
I've shared it here, I think, maybe at, at the Bagada Church or so, in one of the conferences, that the anointing is in levels. And the level of anointing that you possess, or a servant of God possesses, also reflects the dimensions of spiritual problems that can be solved just because you are anointed does not mean every problem is within your jurisdiction to solve in experience now you have to understand this please let me have two gentlemen make sure they are workers also please just come okay yes you come you come sir thank you look at this look at this now this guy is in need of favor open doors this guy is in need of healing i can have the anointing the grace for favor and the grace for healing but not to the degree that can solve this man's financial problems i can pray for him it is the limit of my grace that will be at work in him even if he falls down and stands up are you getting what i'm saying now i can and the the worst part of it is i can have the healing anointing alone if i pray for this guy he will fall down but what he wants is result in the area of prosperity he will stand up and every other remaining challenge in his body will be solved but the issue of the finance cannot be answered because the grace the dimension the anointing of the spirit works within the jurisdiction of his allocation any anointing does not solve any problem no no there are dimensions this is where impartation and other things come remember joshua was already filled with the spirit but moses was told to lay hands on him again are we together now yes so i can solve this man's problem and pray for him and say in the name of jesus let doors be open and nothing happens and you find out that all that continues to happen around my life is that people are healthy they live long they live strong but they are broke it's a reflection of the deficiency of the dimension of grace at work in my life now when that grace comes it will speak immediately now let's 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 change it both of them are trusting god for higher dimensions of maybe spiritual encounters or finances or whatever and i can have that anointing but not to that level we are two preachers respectfully speaking listen carefully let's say myself and let me use a great figure like benny Hinn, you know or um tl osborne of blessed memory he's gone now these are fathers with proven track records are we together now now i can pray for this man in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus let the cancer go i'm calling the name of jesus i'm a sincere believer i'm anointed the holy ghost is at work in me and you'll be surprised the cancer does not leave and this guy will come and sit in a benihin conference where he's just talking to leaders and the cancer leaves now watch this the difference is not the it's not god it's not god the same lord is rich unto all but something the there is the level of anointing it's like money if you have 10,000, you can eat lunch, but you cannot buy a car. If you are hungry, rejoice because you have enough for it. But if you want a car, start crying because you will need more. Are, are we together now? So conferences like this create systems of upgrade. Where you can get higher dimensions of the same grace. And then other, I mean, higher levels of the same grace and other dimensions that are missing in your life. You can know what is on you by the results that are around you. Listen to me. Everything that happens around you is a report card, an attestation to the grace that you carry. This is true. Imagine this. I can be walking with this gentleman. Watch this and then this man meets with me come sir and he chooses to ignore this one and he blesses me and then he passes i think he just blessed me no what was on me was programming my climate although we are close we will not get the same result are we together now you see that there was something on me that was calling for favor from him so although yes sir Although I'm holding the hand of this one and we're walking together. I pray in the name of Jesus that we understand what I'm teaching. That way we will minimize wasting our time trying to outsource things physically. 
realities are programmed the realm of the spirit is that powerful that what manifests in the physical realm there is a grace when you carry a generation must hear you it is not just because listen 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 it's not just because you are the greatest preacher you can have all the anointing in the world and a generation will ignore what you are saying there is an anointing that makes hear ye him a possibility a verdict from heaven that will compel every territory to hear your voice there is a grace that calls for destiny help us they don't just come no they don't just come they know you just because you are holding the hand of a multi-millionaire he can look at you and you can even go to the restaurant with him and pay for your food he is not greedy what is on you is not allowing him bless you because the same man will leave you and go to another person and say please can i have the privilege of giving you a car so he's a giver not to you but to the one who carries the grace let me tell you this there is nobody that is greedy is what is on you that is programming your possibilities it's true priesthood where we don't sit down and just begin to complain why is this not happening my business is not growing no the world has about 7.2 billion people that's enough bodies for god to use to bless you that's enough bodies for god f6.7.2 billion people cannot for, forget you someone has to remember you but is what is on you apostle why is it that people do not listen to what i'm saying is because you only have what to say you have not gotten what will make men listen i will never be the same i've touched your grace my life must change i will never be the same i've touched your grace my life must change i will never be the same i've touched your grace my life must change i will never be the same i will never be the same i've touched your grace my life must change 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 please listen hicc let this wine press be the one that will shift you into dimensions and realms that will turn you into a sign and a wonder listen there is no dimension and hear me when i tell you this it is true there is no dimension of possibilities there is no dimension of dominion that you cannot command the key is not to chase after things no everything in life was designed to be attracted to be drawn by the mysteries of the kingdom and that which i show you tonight is called priesthood is the mystery of dominion the saints reign we program the spiritual climate over us you pick favor from the realm of the spirit add it to january to december you pick speed add it to january to december speak open door add it january to december program every good thing to wait till you are there before it shows up if you are not there then it is allowed to be delayed till you show up priesthood who are thou mounting before zerubbabel that stands before you my brothers and my sisters i don't mean to insult your intelligence but what is in a job that god cannot give you listen listen I, I don't mean to be sarcastic it is true every day 
there are people looking for people to bless in this city what is stopping them from reaching you it is not distance i guarantee you it is not distance and it is not familiarity because gentiles will come to your light not your familiar friends no when those who know you bless you it's difficult to say it's god but when strangers feed your flock then you know that it's a dimension of grace where you wake up in the morning and you collide with all kinds of breakthroughs by evening you return back home and say my god have i not been in lagos and people say ah your season has come you say you are right but it's not time that brought it priesthood opened me to another vista of spiritual possibility it's true we are going to pray and i i want find a way of believing what i share with you tonight your pastor allowed for this meeting so that you are shifted to another dimension whatever he does prospers it doesn't just prosper because he wants it to prosper it is what is on your head that is controlling what is around your life priesthood that you can pray your way up to date down tomorrow spiritually lord i fold that season like a curtain out of my life priesthood the power of legislature what kind of dream is this that i always have every time i'm supposed to be lifted i see myself in secondary school i see myself in my former house no i don't know what it means but i know this is evil because the bible says the path of the justice as a shining light and you use priesthood blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us that he nailed his cross That every good thing starts in my life but doesn't end but the bible says he has turned my morning into dancing not dancing into morning he has turned my sorrow into joy and so you you step back and and take away your priest your your regalia and put that regalia of priesthood it's time to pray it's time to rearrange possibilities it's time to manipulate realities to send angels to send the ministry of the holy spirit to homes to systems to structures compelling them to bow to the lordship of the christ hallelujah please listen i know there may be many pastors following online and so on and so forth why is my church not growing why is growth epileptic i have a message i'm a man of character and integrity i love the lord with all my heart what is this thing that is making people not grow no people do not just come they are compelled to come there is a grace that compels people it's called anakazo it's the, it's the ability of the spirit he he called for a feast and he sent to call people and they were giving excuses one said i just married i need to spend time with my wife another said i built a house i need to celebrate he said go to the street and the byways and compel them compel them listen to me listen there are dimensions you must enter but there are graces that is like that that expansion has not happened you can expand yourself like the molting of a snake come out of your old self into another dimension that sustains the power to command real results lord what is wrong with me i love god but i prophesy and every every case i mention is not true i say you are your john i say i'm not john something is wrong i'm a prophet but it's not speaking get to the position of priesthood and pray out that shell of the flesh until there is a heavy investment of the spirit you come out from that place of priesthood and you become a blazing fire an inferno of fire Haya 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 haya
hear me you're a man of god in ministry here let me give you an honest counsel going around and giving cards for invitation and saying invite me i'm a man of god you will only mock yourself go back to the secret place the place where men are made for a generation and generate the kind of energy that defies being ignored that vetoes your background that vetoes your limitations pray yourself until you intercourse with an anointing a grace that a generation recognizes pray until an investment of the spirit comes upon you you called me into the ministry of signs and wonders lord my life can not be barren. Manta salas kaparata. E preke teke te baratos. Makaparakato seke teke te. Pray HICC. Skalabarata kat shobada siha. Prisu. 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 Encounter with power. Prisu. Encounter with authority. The grace to change nations. The grace to shift systems. Listen, 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 my dear brothers and sisters, hear me. It is because the challenges in our lives have not met authentic priesthood, that's why they remain. Are we together now? Yes, sir. The day you take the matters in your destiny serious, you will melt it like wax before the fire. Because the Bible says he maketh his angels wings and his ministers flames of fire. You can pray your way, priesthood, while men sleep, you are praying. Skaparush kanata. Lagos, hear the word of the Lord. I stand as a priest. I legislate from Leki to VI to Ikreja. I call forth my helpers. I call forth the way makers used by God. I decree and declare no more delay. I program speed. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. I am Beulah and Hepzibah. I cannot be denied. Cannot be denied. Not on grounds of sentiments. Not on grounds of gender. I stand as one who has been helped by God. Hela parus kanakatos. Fito your background. Fito your limitations. Let priesthood become your advantage. Advantage in the spirit. Advantage in destiny. That the opening of your mouth is the opening of the gates of the destinies of men. Someone open your mouth and pray. Cry to the God of heaven. Hela pashalakata. Wine press. Let the maker make you. Let your priesthood speak tonight. Sing that song for me, please.
Praise the Lord. We are rounding up. Please look at me. Listen to me. You are going to pray just two prayer points and we are done for the night. You are going to challenge the Bible says, listen to me. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. He said, casting down every imagination is the word Yazar. The vain imaginations of men and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. You are going to pray. This is priesthood now. Are we together now? You are going to pray and declare that everything that is not consistent with the character of God and the speakings of prophecy, hear the word of the Lord. I come as one sent, anointed by God, and you will lift your voice and begin to make decrees. The Bible says, Declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Lift your voice and pray. Make decrees. Speak. Speak to systems. Speak to structures. Are there men of prayer here? I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lagos, hear my voice. Someone is praying. Bagada, hear my voice. Ikeja, hear my voice. Leki, hear my voice. Africa, hear my voice. I speak in the name of Jesus. Every barrier be torn down by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every climate above me, programming woes, programming delay, stopping a generation from hearing your voice, manipulating your influence across a territorial space. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying. Someone is praying over your ministry. I challenge powers over your business. I confront spirits in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I silence speakings. I silence ordinances. I silence operations in the name of Jesus. Pray. Pray. Kalabarakata. Kebrantos keparita. Shakata balakata barata. point please look at me it was the service in Psalm 3 that says many are they that rise up against me it says many are they that say where is thy God but then it says for thou O Lord that you are a shield for me then it says you are my glory and he uses the next prayer point you are the lifter of my head it says my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn even when the head of a unicorn is down the horn is not down the horn remains up at all times and i shall be anointed with fresh oil please listen listen i want you to take this prayer session seriously you are going to pray lord the grace the anointing the unction for the next level of my life the compelling ability of the spirit that must rest upon me and will resonate like an earthquake across a territory the inferno of fire that must come upon my life and turn me to a wonder i receive it now lift your voice and begin to pray the grace that will make my music ministry step into another dimension for the sake of his majesty the grace that will make my business become a wonder and praise the grace that will make church a ministry a wonder and in that grace oh god that, that help men arise Dimensions of the grace for wealth and abundance. 
for you. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I decree and I declare over everyone here and all the branches and all connected online, I pray by the ministry of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, may mighty anointing come upon your life and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of prayer and supplication that will grant you the grace to travail. I declare by the hand of God, let it rest upon you now. These three women, I'm not ministering this night, but these three women, I'm seeing oil being poured on all three of them. Help them, please. New dimension. I shift you in the spirit. New dimension. New dimension. New dimension. Take that fire. New dimension. Dimension of power. Dimension of grace. I amplify your voice. I give your products wings in the spirit. I command the generation to hear your voice. I place something upon your life that defies being denied. I forbid you from being rejected. I decree and declare 2020 expand 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 I speak by the spirit expand at the choir expand move to new levels expand increase increase in knowledge increase in prosperity increase in influence increase in wisdom beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny Salaska de Baska Nakata Branda Katekos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline 